is connecting. Is that, uh, she's just about in then? Okay, I'll, I see we're recording now. So it is uh, 9.31, so I'll call the meeting to order. Um, good morning, staff and council. Um, I wanna remind everyone to please turn off your cell phones or place them on vibrate and remind council of the declaration of pecuniary interest if it arises. Uh, if anybody's not speaking as part of the meeting, it'd be good to mute your uh, um, computer and that way it'll keep from uh, interfering with anybody else that's trying to speak. We have the minutes here from the regular council meeting of September 21st. If there's, uh, if they're in order, I'll look for a resolution or a motion to uh, approve the minutes as presented. Motion to approve, Mr. Mayor. Moved by Councillor Ellis and seconded by Councillor Webb. All in favor? And that's carried. All right, thank you. Uh, we don't have any scheduled delegations. Uh, was there anybody that came in this morning at all, Bianca? No, there is no one wishing to be a delegation. All right, well, we'll move into staff reports for information and I'll go through them one by one as far as if anybody wishes to speak to them. If not, we'll receive them. So um, the first uh, staff report was from Laura Stone with um, Economic Development Officer, or Planner and Economic Development Officer of a Professional Planners Institute Conference. Did you have anything to add to that, Laura, or does council have any questions with regards to that? No, I don't have anything to add to that. Thank, I do, actually, yes, I do. I wanted to say thank you to council for um, putting money towards uh, training for our staff. I, it's much appreciated. All right. Well, the education is a big thing, so thank you for taking part in that. Is there any comments for uh, questions from council? If not, I'll take a motion to receive that report. Moved by Councillor Pomeroy and seconded by Councillor Webb. All in favor? And that's carried. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. The next report is uh, from Gen uh, a general update from Treasurer Wendland. Wendland, go ahead. Is there anything that you wanted to add to that or is there any questions from Council? No, nothing to add. Okay, Councillor Pomeroy. You're muted. Yeah, I have uh, one question here. Uh, where is it? Oh, with Plan Mac. Yep. Um, can you give us an update on your meeting this week? Or um, basically, we had a meeting uh, late last week um, over Zoom, and we're trying to work through um, CPR and how it will all connect together to get the proper information for the connecting link um, grant application. So we will probably have Plan Mac come at the next council meeting as a delegation because there is some information that I had suggested that they update council on and that would be good information prior to the grant application going in in November. Okay, thank you. All right. Anything else? If not, I'll take a motion to receive that report. Moved by Deputy Mayor Giroux, seconded by Seconder, Councillor Ellis. All in favor? And that's carried. Okay, our next is uh, the budget schedule um, that Wendland's prepared. Um, I just had a comment as far as uh, thank you for doing this, Wendland. It's uh, um, it's allowing the opportunity for the public to get involved as well as council to get in early on what they're thinking they would like to see on the budget and then moves into the rest of uh, um, the meat of the budget. So um, the only suggestion I had is it's a pretty intense schedule that you've put there. The first one there, October 13th meeting, I'm just wondering if some of that, other than the building and planning, if the public input could come as part of our public meeting on the 19th is um, schedule them in at that to get the their input um, over our public meetings from, you know, the public can have their input there. I don't know how many there'll be, but uh, 
we could try and schedule it that way and then uh, move on with the rest of it. The other ones are three hours before and after lunch. And I think we found in the past that that's a pretty, like, you know, it's not bad to have one or two of those meetings, but uh, if they're all going to be that long, they might be a little bit, uh, you know, intense. But uh, um, so I just wondered if there was a way of uh, changing that a little bit or I'll see what councils, what yeah. council thinks of the schedule. If they're happy with it, that's fine. Yeah, just on the public input piece, um, we put that in to have them uh, come on the Zoom meeting if they so desired. But mm -hmm. it, I talked with Bob and it's my intent to have um, it put on the website so that the public can still submit written submissions if they don't feel comfortable on Zoom. So they could still do a written submission throughout the process and it can be um, reviewed by council and staff <clears throat> at that time. So it doesn't close them off to just putting something in at that first meeting because we normally take requests throughout the whole budget process and try to work in any new items. Okay, and the only thing I had was possibly to have one meeting um, in person, like say at the Lions Hall or something, so the people that don't use internet have an opportunity to possibly, by appointment it would have to be probably, because you can only have so many in a room, but uh, they could make an appointment to come and be a delegation and we could let one at a time in or something like that uh, to give them their input that way. I don't know what council thinks of that, but it might be good to have one meeting that way at least. But uh, go, uh, Larry, go ahead. Yeah, um, in regards to um, putting it on the website, uh, Wendland, is, is that on now? Or are you putting that on right away so the general public would see it on the website? Well, we were waiting for this meeting today to find out exactly what council's desires were, because I didn't know if council wanted to modify the schedule or not. So once this was going to be um, discussed, then we would have someone put it up on the website after that. Okay. Uh, and just a comment on scheduling people to comment on the, on the budget. Um, most definitely, I think what has to be a one-on-one -on -one, uh, with the uh, video um, because of the circumstances as they get worse, I don't think we should relax our ways of doing business and, until things are resolved. So uh, definitely by appointment only, I would suggest. Yeah, it would be a scheduling thing, I would think. But uh, um, that was that was more for the, like with the Zoom, they can schedule in and, and Bianca can take care of that but the uh um the in-person meeting is something if we were to try and do something like we've done um at the lion's hall it would still be a, a they would have to book an appointment to come in so you don't get more than the number that you're allowed to have inside so um but that's up to council if you wanted to stick with the zoom all the way through that's fine with me but uh, i just thought there is some people in the public that might not use computer and might have a hard time with the Zoom side of it. So the letter would take care of that, Wendelin, probably, but go ahead. Yeah, we just thought it might, you know, speed things up as well if they submitted an email or an inquiry through the website to the general mailbox. And that way we would have things in writing so that we wouldn't miss something potentially and that it would be, be able to be organized for council. Okay, um, Hart, go ahead. You had a question, comment? Yeah, I was just, just going to oh. say I agree with you, Jim, in that if we can, we should try to, what, everything okay? Uh, you just froze a little bit there, Hart. I don't know if that's my computer or. No, mine's <laughs> been doing that on this end when you guys have been talking, but um, no, I was just going to say I agree, Jim, in that um, if we can open it up, obviously there'll be precautions we have to take, but um. Um, if we could have something over at the rink where you could let the public, obviously there's members in our community that may not have computers and some of them might not be completely familiar with technology. So um, anything that would give them the ability to voice their opinion, I think um, would be good on our behalf. I understand obviously there'd be precautions and maybe we try it once and it doesn't really work and we have to go back to Zoom, but I think, uh, 
I'd like to err on the side of uh, trying to let the public get in. Okay, go ahead, Barry. Yeah, I have to agree with Hart. It's um, it's only fair to the public. Like Hart says that uh, you know people, older people especially, don't have computers, and there's a lot of people that would like you know maybe to have some input, maybe big or small, don't matter. It's uh, if it's concern of the public, they should be heard. So that's what I was suggesting to have one of those meetings opened up to the, um, you know, to a public meeting. The rest of them, you could probably, for how many people that come to it, you could probably get away with doing one of that, that way and the rest doing them through Zoom. But uh, um, I'm looking for council's suggestions here and we'll, we'll move on. The schedule's there. Could have just changed one of them to a public meeting at the Lions Hall just to uh, um, add the public part of it into it and then like even the, you know, I don't know which one, but just one of those dates could be held at the Lions Hall or at the Legion, wherever we decide. And, uh, um, but the rest of it looks okay, Wendell, and I was just suggesting okay. that the 13th, you could move it to the 19th as far as the public delegation part of it. And that'll give you a little more time to get it ready. And uh, um, it, would, it would be a public, we'd be able to come into that on Zoom at the 19th there for in the delegation portion of our meeting. but. Just a suggestion. It's up to council here. Um, there is a schedule here. Go ahead, Dave. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I agree with. Uh, I totally agree with what council is saying here. And if we do, uh, I hope we follow through with this and have a uh, a spot at the arena or elsewhere for the public to come in. Who who would actually then be there? Is my question. Would it be what member of staff is going to be there? to receive public's input? It would just be Wendell and Bob, I would think, and Bianca. I don't think we need staff members there because it would be just a thing to put put their uh, thoughts into the, to get them into the budget. Thank you. So so possibly, if council is okay, I would say it suggests that possibly you take one of those meetings, whether it's October 26th or the 9th, uh, to make that a, in-person meeting um, and they can book, they can mail in their request to be on or they can phone in and, and get on the agenda. Um, and we could possibly, I don't know, Bob, we could figure that out, but yeah. one or two at a time, there's enough room over there that we could probably work it out. Go ahead, Bob, and then Hart. Yeah, through you, Mayor Martin, I, I guess I would suggest uh, uh, the meeting of the 26th that would give us ample time to advertise it. It would give us ample time for the public to see the advertisement and get the word out. Um, and hopefully then everyone would have a chance to see the advertisement and then attend if they wish. Okay. All right, that sounds good to me. What's council think? So if you could adjust it a bit, Wendell, and that'll give you time to get it out on the website. And, uh, um, the only problem with that one, it wouldn't get out in the newspaper, uh, you know, on the, you know, for the next rail, but uh, I'm sure we can work around, we can put it on the signboard or something like that. Go ahead, Hart. Oh, yeah, I was sorry. just going to say, I was, I was just going to say, the sooner we get it out, the sooner we can have the public comments back yeah. and then, then we can act on them. Right? So there's no okay. use getting the, the public comments back at the last meeting and then we don't have time to act on them. Right. And what's the thoughts on the 13th meeting, moving it to the 19th as far as in the delegation part of, for the public part of it there. Um, and then we would, that would be one last meeting um, to lump up. We can, that's up to you, just uh, uh, move it into the 19th is my suggestion, but Bob, go ahead. Sorry, if I could just uh, address the comments of Councillor Webb, I agree with that. Um, I, I think the sooner we have comments from the public the better um, it helps with the entire process and I think we've learned from previous years if we put that at the front end of the process it certainly helps the whole budget process and, and it helps council with uh, with establishing priorities uh, if you wish to have the advertisement in the Havelock rail the Havelock rail publishes the first week of the month um, we would have to have the ad in by the 15th so that meeting would then have to come after the first or second of November so. So it's probably better to just 
keep it as it is. It could still go advertise in there for the balance of the, the schedule for the budget should be in the rail so people can see, um, you know, they'll be able to pick up the rest of it. Other than that, we'll have to advertise the way we have been through social media and uh, hopefully word of mouth gets around. That's the best part of sometimes. So, um, so I'll look for a, a resolution from council that we move ahead with the schedule. Um, the only question I had was the 13th, if we could move it to the 19th and then have one in-person meeting on the 26th. I don't know what your thoughts are there. Is that, would that work, Wendelin? Yeah, so um, I'll probably confer with Bob after this meeting and um, try to change things around and then I'll send out an email to all staff and council and then we'll get it put up on to the website as soon as possible. Okay. All right, all right, go ahead. Just for clarification, then the meeting on the 13th has been canceled or? That's what I was asking. It's up to you if you want to make the resolution. It was just uh, a suggestion was to move it to the 19th and uh, condense that a little bit, but uh, see where we go on the other ones. I don't know, it's, I, hopefully you've left extra time as all of it is because I was saying two hours for two departments or whatever. There's a couple of big ones there that are gonna take a lot more time. So I think yeah. you've done well at uh, putting the ones in there to each of those meetings. So um, so I think it looks okay. And I just think you could get away with the 19th portion to have the public input at during delegation. But I don't know what your thoughts are, Wendell. Well, uh, again, I was gonna confer with Bob because I don't know what's coming up on the 19th meeting. if. It's gonna, you know, bog down another council meeting. So I'd like to talk to him about that. And you know, even if we maybe move um, a portion of that meeting to another day or something in the week, then I can try to work that out and make everybody okay. not overwhelmed. Okay. Well, can we just leave it with? Would it work, Bob? Just to leave it with you, and you can. This is in. For the most part, the schedule is acceptable, I think, to council, and, and it will include a public meeting portion too, which is important. So um, if you and Wendelin can work out the details on that 13th meeting to see if we could get away without it, um, that would be a the only suggestion I have. But go ahead, Bob. Yes, and, and through, yep, through you, Mayor Martin, and just uh, as a preview to the next meeting, as the treasurer previously stated, we're gonna try and have Plan Mac come to that meeting uh, we also have another delegation scheduled with respect to our mandatory accessibility uh, plan um, that is required by the province. And of course, typically that is our planning meeting. So our next, our next meeting is a bit full with regular business. Okay. All right. So that's fine. That's all we need to know. Um, so if the schedule is there. It's good. Barry, go ahead. Yeah, so on the 13th, are you just going to uh, take the pub public input out of that meeting and have the rest of it? Sounds like it's all going to be in there because we have a busy meeting on the 19th. So it probably is going to have to carry, carry on. We'll have to move on with that. Uh, it sounds like it'll be too heavy a meeting for the 19th if we have those delegations coming. I didn't realize that. Yep. Okay. Okay. So... If you can work it out this week, uh, all the big thing there, I think, is a public meeting in person for, you know, some. So, um, and we can move ahead with the schedule and get it advertised and get some input. Go ahead, Dave. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can I assume that we're going to go ahead with the 13th because we've talked around it here, and I think council needs an opportunity. That's not very far away. We have busy schedules too. So, are we having that public meeting on the 13th, or aren't we? Yeah, it sounds like we need it. Okay. And I think if we run out of time, like we can put in extra meetings yeah. here and there. Yeah. Yeah. This is an outline of what we, what's ahead. So um, sounds good. It's going to be a different type of uh, budget doing it through Zoom. Um, but I think it is the safest way as far as what's going on right now with the numbers and probably save something getting canceled later. Go ahead, Bob. Sorry, through you, Mayor Martin, just to uh, to address Councillor Webb's uh, earlier concerns and comments. So having in-person 
delegations? Are are we still carrying on with that, or where are we leaving that? Yeah, on the twenty sixth, I think it was still like we at least need to have one, and that's I think that is that okay part as far as doing it on the twenty sixth. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I just, the sooner the better. If we're going to do it, right? I just said let's do it at the first. First meeting that we can that they've noticed about it so yeah so it's exactly what you said then bob as far as the 26 and we'll get the advertisement as soon as you have it all finalized you can get everything moving go ahead so just further to that i i think we should get council's input with respect to where you would like council priorities to fall into this do you wish to hear from the public first uh, at both and then present council priorities um, I, I guess for the optics of it, it, it appears that we're presenting council priorities before we hear from the public in person. Uh, council may not wish to do it that way. Well, we're going to have the council input on the 13th or the public input on the 13th, right, Bob? You've got that on the schedule? Like that's going to be the Zoom side of it. That's correct. Through you, Mayor Martin, you'll have the Zoom input. You won't have the in-person input at that point. Okay, we can move ours till after that 26th or during the 26th meeting, maybe if you like. That's up to you. It's uh, um, if it, if it's a concern as far as the uh, um, public coming first, it's uh, that's something you can work out. I totally hear you what you're saying as far as the council coming out with their priorities. Um, we can leave them till the 26th and move them in with the public part of it. After okay. the it's it's totally up to the comfort of council and how you wish to present it. Yeah, well, I hear what you're saying. I think that's what Dave's saying. Uh, so as long as we know where we have to speak to or where we are, our part of it comes into. And if you want to wait till after the public input comes in, put us in on the 26th after the public speaks at the in-person meeting, if you like. Okay. 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 That's what we will do. Thank All you. Right. Okay, and it'll be recorded too, and the in-public meeting will still be recorded, so everybody can watch it. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so uh, look for a motion to, uh, it's basically to approve the schedule as reported here with a couple of amendments there with regard to the public meeting, so, and, uh, and the council input part of it. But other than that, everything will pretty well stay the way it is, and Bob and Wendling can fine tune it and get it out into the, onto a uh, advertiser. So moved by Councillor Webb, seconded by Deputy Mayor Giroux. All in favor? And that's carried. Thank you. Um, next we have uh, the investment update. Wendling, uh, looks like you're on here today. So, uh, um, I'll let you go ahead. It's very vague here. I didn't know. Uh, um, I thought there would be more to it. It's a lot of money there, but there wasn't a lot of. Um, uh, well, council had asked for an update on where the status of the investments uh, stands. So they did fluctuate during the COVID period, of course, as the markets did change, but it seems to be on the road to recovery right now. So, um, I pulled the numbers off on September 30th, even though I don't have the final statement in, um, it just gives you a snapshot that um, if on that day of September 30th, if everything was liquidated, it would have been worth um, over $9.6 million, but that's the market. So um, I haven't checked today again, what to see what the status is, but it does fluctuate day by day. And it just seems that we have um, received a increase in the market rates, not the book rates. The book rates are of what um, we've technically earned. Okay, so. like, you know, some of the things I look at, like um, so how much do we collect, like, like for our taxes that we collect from during the, uh, for the year from our rate bears. Normally, from what I understand, your reserve is supposed to be equal to whatever you collect. So if you collect $6 million a year, you should have $6 million in reserves or to simplify things. 
Okay. Yeah, I haven't looked at those numbers yet. Normally, those numbers are looked at uh, year end each year okay. with the final um, what's outstanding in the accounts receivable uh, of the taxes versus um, what is billed out in the levy. Okay, because it just looks like this thing is building and building, and uh, um, I'm not sure if there's it's nice to have a healthy reserve. I'm just wondering if, uh, you know, like if we do collect $104,000 in interest there, does that go back in to help us do things or are you putting it back into that the- That goes back directly into each reserve um, allocation within that investment. Which some are higher than others, like some- like Yes, a reserve, is it like the waste would be higher and the min would be higher versus, say, the library. Are you had a question there? Yeah, I was just wondering, uh, what do we, you know what we traditionally get as a return on that investment, Wendelin? Like, it varies year to year. Um, in terms of percentage, is it static? Three, four? Um, off the top of my head, I'm not sure of the percentage, but I know we're making at least over $100,000 a year in market value okay because but just a hundred thousand on 10 million is only one percent right so yeah i realize i realize it's covid this year so this yeah. year is obviously different but yeah last year was much higher yep okay. in 19. thank you yeah any other questions with regards to that i thank you for coming back anyways i know we've been asking about this one and i just was hoping for a little more detail and i guess it's something that we can sit down with you and uh go through how, how all these numbers are working and how they come together. So um, maybe in the future, if council has any further questions, whether they can go in and see what I'm learning, get um, clarification on how, how it works and uh, where we stand as far as our reserves, because it looks like a huge reserve there, which I'm sure it's, uh, it's not how it looks, but uh, when you look at that number, it looks like there's a lot of money to be spent um, without affecting the tax rate. but. Anyways, if there's, is there any other questions for Wendland? Okay, motion to approve the, uh, or move the report, moved by Councillor Webb, seconded by Councillor Pomeroy. All in favor? And that's carried. Thank you. Um, so the next report here is uh, um, our closed session meeting. Because of the way we've been doing it through COVID and through Zoom, um, we've been closing out our meetings and then going to uh, closed session. Um, and it, the reporting is kind of a little bit different. So Bob put this report together to show all the closed session meetings that we had. And most of them are on the same day as our, as our other uh, um, meetings, but it's just a little different. Normally we move into close, then we come back and close out. So you wanna speak to this, Bob? Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. Um, um further to your comments in in the interest of transparency this report is presented today to council um, basically it explains uh, the number of closed session meetings that we've had during the pandemic period our process has changed as council will, will know typically when we meet in person uh, it's essentially this all one meeting so we have we start in open session we move a motion to move into closed session we rise from closed session and we know what was discussed in closed session. Um, it's typically all one meeting and it's reflected all in the same minutes. Um, as a result of the pandemic, we've been meeting in a different format. So we've been shutting down the Zoom meeting and we started meeting in person uh, for closed session. So uh, closed session hasn't been captured in the minutes as they have in the past. So this report simply summarizes the closed session meetings that we've had and uh, allows for transparency. And we will continue this process uh, for as long as we continue to meet in, in the fragmented uh, process that we are now with uh, open session in Zoom and closed session in person. So we will have one of these reports every time we have a closed session meeting. Very good. Okay, is there any questions from council? If not, I'll take a motion to receive that report from the clerk. Motion to receive, Mr. Mayor. Moved by Councillor Ellis, seconded by Deputy Mayor Duro. All in favor? And that's carried. Okay, our next uh, report here is from Clerk Angioni with regards to the Havelock Lions Club agreement. 
I always like looking back at some of the history of some of these agreements. That's a 25 year old agreement. I see Councillor Pomeroy's name on there and uh, um, some other names, uh, Bob Emery. And um, I always like looking back at some of those things. But uh, anyways, it does come for renewal in September of uh, 21. So uh, it was asked to get this pulled out to start reviewing it. And I guess over this year, council and staff will be working with the Lions on this agreement to be renewed or or look different. I'm not sure, but um, council got any questions or comments? Barry, do you have anything? Yeah, I, I think um, I think it should be re reviewed because at the time when it was signed, um, we didn't have the staff for to look after all of the arena. And uh, I think there's some things that we got to um, just change around, tweak it a wee bit. And, <clears throat> you know, hopefully we can come up with a, a, a mutual agreement. I imagine we can. I, I think we should tweak it a wee bit. Yeah, okay, so we'll, this will allow us, we'll, we've got, everybody has a copy of this and uh, over the next couple of months, I would think uh, over the winter, we'll have to get together with uh, the Lions or a representative from the Lions and staff and, and council to look at the agreement and see if, you know, if there's anything we can do to uh, tweak it. They're a great asset to our, our municipality. A lot of things happen from the Lions as far as, uh, some of our groups and that that they've been helping over the years. So um, anyways, we'll see what we can do uh, to try and come up with another agreement. Larry? Uh, this, <clears throat> as I read through it, I kind of get familiarized with what the Alliance actually have use of and so on. Um, because I'm not quite as familiar with, with the Lions and uh, how they operate, I noticed that uh, they have a Lions Den so this might be a silly question, but I was wondering what the lion's den is used for. Anybody know? I don't think they're using it anymore. I think community care is using it right now, if I'm not mistaken. I think we did some changes there last year um, when they needed a space for, so they've been using it, I think, for the last at least a year now. Um, that was that room that's um, just beside the elevator. Um, it used to be for their uh, meeting room and uh, now it's community care, I think, that's using it, if I'm not mistaken, Bob, or Ryan maybe could add to it. Anybody? Go ahead. Good morning, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. Um, yeah, just to confirm, the uh, BON has uh, been occupying that space uh, to provide uh, programming, uh, recreational programming for seniors for the past few years there. Yeah. Dave, go ahead. You're muted. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Ryan, have they continue to use that through COVID? Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, they haven't been using it through uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, no. Okay, thank you. And one more uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I agree with Councillor Pomeroy. Uh, we should certainly go through this and, and your statement also with uh, either a member of the Lions or Committee of the Lions, but I don't want it to fall off the table. So sometimes that happens and I know it's a ways off, but I think I would hope that the acting CAO will put that on the, on the calendar to bring that forward back to council so that council can discuss this and see if there is any changes that in fact we do need. So. Yeah, lots changed over 25 years, so I'm sure there's things that are going to have to uh, be adjusted. So go ahead, Bob. You yep, can through you, uh, Mayor Martin, I can assure Council that we will definitely keep this on the agenda. We know we have a deadline here for when this, uh, this agreement expires, so this will need to be dealt with promptly before expiration date. Uh, if Council wishes, we can certainly uh, we can make it part of the budget process if that's appropriate. Uh, we'll leave that to Council's discretion. Thank you. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask if there's any budget implications. It is in the end of September when it comes due. So 
Um, if we could do it after the budget's over, if that would work, that would be great. But if not, if it's going to be a bud have budget implications, it'll have to be a part of the process. So um, take a look at it and see what you think. But like Dave said, don't let it fall off the cart. We gotta we got lots of time to deal with it. Sometimes things get left, and then all of a sudden you're scrambling. So um, figure out the best possible way, and we'll we'll move on. Okay. So a motion to receive that uh, report then. Um, Deputy Mayor Giroux and Councillor Ellis, all in favor, carried. All right, so we have some staff reports for follow-up action. Um, so the first one there uh, was with regards to the Matheson Memorial plaque. Um, <laughs> so I'll let Ryan go ahead anyway. It's a lot more expensive than I figured to get some names scratched into a rock. So um, anyway, go ahead. And through you, Mr. Mayor. So uh, this report was uh, prepared for council and follow up to the uh, previous comments made at the uh, last council meeting um, in regards to replacing the, the plaque that was at uh, the Matheson property. So uh, we did meet with uh, with a company that does stone engraving. It was uh, it was a suggestion by council at that meeting that we get some costs and some options to uh, to see what that might look like. So. Uh, the company has provided a couple of quotes uh, for council's consideration. One option would be to relocate the rock that's there and um, and and use that rock. And the other one would be just to purchase another one. So um, I had actually just added another option in there for council just to uh, consider. And that was just doing like a, a metal sign with uh, vinyl lettering. Um, I did speak to a designer on that. There is some options that we have that we can kind of make it... Uh, just kind of change it up and make it look nice, like not just a basic uh, white background with the black lettering kind of thing. So I uh, just threw that in there as an additional um, option for council. Uh, I think I did mention uh, in previous meetings that uh, we could potentially do something with the new sign at the entrance as well. We could maybe add it in there, but uh, anyways, um, those are some options there for council's uh, consideration, just looking for direction on, on how they wish to proceed. Okay, the one question I had there is, and I think it came up at our last meeting, and this is one of those history things that I might be missing something, but the rock being where it is, I think Dave brought it up, and I just wonder um, where it is, or maybe it was Larry, but anyway, it doesn't matter um, where it is. I was asking last week why it couldn't come out to, by the arena there, like in the island there, by that little piece of grass between the road that goes around the back of the um, arena and the parking lot there. So it's more visible. I just, I, I just wonder if that spot meant something. I've, I've suggested about moving things before, and sometimes there's history there that I don't know about, and it's all of a sudden sparked something up. But uh, if the rock was out there, with more visible, and maybe a camera off the back of the building, so we can watch them, uh, watch who's tampering with it. Uh, I don't know, but I do like the cheaper alternative, and possibly do both. You could put something on the entrance sign also but that's up to council. Go ahead, Dave. Thank you, Mayor Martin. Well, let me give you a little bit of background. I thought I've spoke to this before, but I know I'm uh, um, old, so I, I know the history of it. So I'll give you some history of it. I thought I've done it in the past. The former Reeve, Deputy Reeve, Bob Watson, was actually going to be the owner of that property. He asked the Mathesons, Jack and Evelyn, if they would donate that property because they were the first people in Hadlock back to the municipality for heritage. And they agreed to that. So the mayor at the time and the deputy Reeve, I guess, I think Bob, I don't think Bob was ever did deputy mayor. He was a deputy Reeve. They talked to the Mathesons, and it was their wish to have a rock placed on that hill okay. for heritage because it was the highest point on their property, and they wanted that rose granite to come from Havelock, Belmont, Methune, on the rose quarry from County Road 44. Now I have that in my history here, but I did phone Mr. Watson on the weekend to make sure I was correct because I knew this was coming up. So I wanna thank Ryan. He did exactly what we asked him to do, but because of the history, 
of the stone, it, in my opinion, it should be left there and have the sign, which Ryan requests or uh, give us a price on or said what he could do, the last, the last item and have that there. Um, and if council so chooses to have another sign or another rock even someplace else to display for the mountains and property, that's great. But for me and for the history of our municipality, I think the stone should remain there. And it's up to council whether they want it engraved or not. And if they don't, then we should put the plaque back on the one Russ, uh, Ryan is suggesting. So that's, that's my history and that's, that's why the stone is placed where it is. Okay, thank you, Dave. And that's, uh, there's always a reason behind why something's happened. And I do remember some of that stuff. So, uh, um, so it's up to council here. It's a huge cost to get it etched. Uh, um, we can buy a lot of those hundred dollar signs and replace it every week if we like. Uh, um, Cause unfortunately that's what's happening and it'd be nice to be able to catch these people. Go ahead, Barry. Yeah, I have to go along with Deputy Mayor Jerome. And I wonder if there would be any savings if we didn't relocate the rock, which he has indicated, and and have it etched. Because you know with a plaque on it, it's, it's going to go missing again, probably. Um, but I think in the first proposal, it was relocate the rock during restoration process and complete the letterings on site. So if we didn't relocate the rock, there has to be a savings. Yeah, and I think that was it, wasn't it, Ryan? You were going to bring it out to get it done and then take it back in, and that's where it was still that cost? Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor, yeah. So when we met on site, uh, it was suggested that the rock be brought out so that they could um, complete the restoration process on the rock, and then it could be returned back out. So. Um, Staff did have a look at that. It is a very large rock, um, but it, it can't be moved. So um, it would just be additional spent expenses would just be uh, staff time and equipment to relocate that rock if, choose, if council wishes to do that. Okay, Hart, go ahead. Hart? Oh, frozen. Yeah, I'm just, sorry, I'm just curious. Uh, what does it mean by restoration process? Is that more than... Are they doing more than just putting letters on it or so like, are they you, cleaning the rock or for you mr mayor um when we met on site we said that uh in order to do uh, a proper job on that rock there would be a little bit of a uh, restoration process because it's not completely flat and uh, they require a little bit of restoration on that rock to be able to do a nice job with the engraving thank you Ryan. Sorry, I wonder who did the one in the Lions Park there uh, along Highway 7, because it's not polished or anything like that. It's just, uh, and they did a beautiful job too. And it's not to say that it wouldn't be the same price, but maybe they're doing a little more than needs to be done because the natural finish is nice too. And that one looks pretty good to me. Uh, as long as all the information's on there and it looks nice, I think that's our big concern. So um, I personally, the thing is, you know, it comes out of the parkland and uh, um, that's what it's for is things like this. And I think if we put a plaque, we're just going to keep replacing it. Um, so it'd be nice to do it right um, and get it done. So mm -hmm. if I don't know, that's up to council here, but, uh, and if they want to go that route. So I, was there any other hands there? Uh, go ahead, Dave. Sorry, I lost track here. And then Larry. Once again, thank you for your work on this, Ryan. I I, uh, I just wondered if if it was possible. Did you ask the question? Could they actually etch the stone where it is? There we go. Uh, yeah, I did. We did talk about that, but just given the location of where it is, is they found they thought it would be difficult to get back in there. They use uh, work vans and stuff, so. Uh, think that it was really she thought that it would be uh, relocating it during restoration process would be the best way to deal with that one follow-up question if I might mr. mayor okay. 
I guess I'd have to direct this to public works. So is it is it the public works that'll move it or will we have to get a crane in or what's, I don't think we can move that rock. Uh, I'll let uh, Peter uh, respond to that. He's, uh, his staff has gone out and had a look at it, so. Yes, through your through you, Mayor Martin, uh, to answer Deputy Mayor Drow's question is no, we uh, we would have to hire in some uh, some additional equipment. Our backhoe would not be able to move that rock. When we have the loader, when we get the loader, would it do it, Peter? We we were a little sketchy on the loader actually too, Jim. That rock is quite a size, and going up and down the hills where that rock is, it would be uh, okay. It, yeah, we wouldn't want to damage it, I guess, in moving it as well, right? So we were a little hesitant on that, but our backhoe definitely will not, no. Okay, thank you. Um, so the granite part of it, as long as it's rose granite, does it have to be that particular rock, Dave, or is it we could bring a rock from, from the rose quarry and like a new rock, same, similar, you know, something that's manageable? I, I don't know, we're gonna spend a lot of time on here, but uh, what what is the option that council would like, first of all, like if it's the etching, um, there is another part of it there about bringing a different stone in, but I guess that comes back to, is that particular stone somebody's favorite rock? Well, I, I can't answer the, whether it was a favorite rock or not, but if our equipment won't handle that size of a stone to bring it down, how's it gonna handle it to get another stone back up? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a little smaller maybe or something, but uh, okay, well. I'll leave it up to council, but I I, yeah. I just told you all I know. Yeah. And for now, because it's been so long, I'm going to make a motion here regardless of what, what council decides to do with the stone to get a plaque and get it on there. Okay. All right. Um, so we have a motion by Deputy Mayor Giro, um that we put a plaque on there and you know what? hundred dollars or thereabouts uh, we can get that part get it on there get it up you know and then we can work on the other part of it possibly over the winter to see if there's another idea so move by deputy mayor Giro. is are you seconding it larry second with a comment mr mayor go ahead um regarding the etching uh and you and you brought the topic up there's the piece of rock that's over by the caboose on number seven um, I realize that um, the uh, Peterborough Monument are well qualified to do the work, but I'm wondering the people that done the stone at the caboose there, uh, that looks great. Uh, and so my thoughts would be we should have another costing done if we're going to go the, the uh, etching way. And as well as um, your comment about another piece of rose granite, I don't think we should be buying um, another piece of rose granite, but I think Mr. Drain, who probably donated the last one, would probably donate another one if that eliminates some of the costs. But um, I would definitely like to see another cost regarding the etching and this company that done the one at the caboose. Um, maybe they would have the ability to go in there and do it on location. So we okay. So we have a motion here for the um, for the plaque here, and we do have a seconder to buy that plaque. And you know we can still work on the other part of it. This is a pretty reasonable price plaque to get get it identified on what the you know what the Mathesons have done for us. So I, I personally think we can move ahead with this motion here, and then still look at what you're saying there as far as check into who did the one on the Lions Park, and maybe they could help us out. I know they had a van. It was a husband and wife thing that they came in and um, and did it right on site there. So we could still look into that, I would think, but that's up to council here. So um, I'll, I'll go ahead. Barry, go ahead. Yeah, um, I have to um, reiterate on Larry's comment there too, because we have uh, the stones right outside the municipal office there. The two of them are etched and I, I don't know who excuse me, who done them, but uh, I think we should get another price. I know uh, I have a rock in front of our place too, you know, with their name on it. And it was done a heck of a lot cheaper than that. So. Yeah, so we can still look, sorry. But, Barry. Yeah, we still look for a price, uh, but we got to go ahead with 
with that. And, and the plaque, like Deputy Mayor Giroux said, it's, you know, it, it's a gift from, uh, from the Mathesons. So uh, it's, it's very little in return. So, okay, so what I'm hearing here is that we go ahead with uh, purchasing the plaque and get it installed on their ASAP. Um, and then we can still look into who did the lion's uh, stone there or our stones or your stone, Barry. We can still check into the other part of it and see if we can get something more permanent. So I'll call the question. All in favor of the motion? And that's carried. So we'll get that plaque made, Ryan, as soon as you can, and we'll get it on there and put a camera with it. Um, I think that's something we're going to have to look at for that property, and that's, that's another day. But... Uh, um, I think there's some people even on the screen here that have game cameras and maybe the township needs to look for a couple too to try and uh, get a handle on what's happening back in that property. But anyways, we'll move on. Is that okay, Ryan, then? You can get that plaque going? Yeah, thank you. Did, did Ryan need a motion uh, for further pricing there? I don't know whether you need that right now. You can bring it back a report uh, when you, if you find out anything different, Ryan. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'm aware of who did the etching on the Highway 7 there. I have that company's name. Uh, the purpose of this report was to give uh, Council a budget price on what it would be due to accomplish that. If uh, if Council had have chose to, to perceive that, we would have got additional pricing on that project itself. So that was just more, uh, um, wasn't going to call three companies in to, to do that. It was more just getting a budget price for Council's uh, uh, thoughts. Okay, thank you. All right. We'll move on to the next one, and that's Parks and Recreation Facilities uh, staff assignments here. So um, go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, so uh, in follow up to um, Council's recent decision to delay the ice installation uh, plans for this fall at the arena, uh, Council had expressed an interest in uh, learning more about what staff uh, would be doing over the uh, winter season. Uh, without having the obligation to install ice and, and maintain the facility to the current standards. So I just kind of put together some of the a list of things that we typically would be we would be doing. Um, I listed a few additional projects that uh, I thought that we could accomplish um, internally instead of uh, contracting externally. Um, there's some projects through the facility condition assessments that were completed in 2018 that I thought that uh, our staff could um, complete ourselves. Therefore, uh, saving a little bit of money and with the if we had some additional time uh, I thought we could maybe complete some of those projects so um, really I just wanted to just update council uh, with the recent decision um, with that um, and without having any changes to the staffing model uh, it does allow council uh, flexibility if they decide to uh, uh, install the ice uh, at some point so um, the only real uh, the only real difference in the staffing level is that um, at this point, we're not going to be uh, recruiting anybody for part-time winter work uh, over the arena to uh, do this, to operate the skate sharpening uh, room and uh, moving nets and things like that during games. So we wouldn't require that at this point. But uh, other than that, um, the report just basically says uh, things will remain the same and then just kind of listed out um, uh, some work plans that we'll, we'll be completing this year. Thanks, Brian. I know you we talked about delaying the installation of the ice and I don't think it's a totally dead um, option there as far as there's still a lot of people would like to see the ice go in. Um, I, I'm talking to other municipalities around us and I know everybody's in the same boat as far as what to do. Um, the ones that have two arenas, some of them are only opening one, some are still opening both. Um, I don't think the cost is in putting it in as much as uh, all the rest of the things that go around it and the equipment running, but uh, um, what's council's thoughts on that? One thing I was told last week, and I, maybe you could check into it, is this, this thing that we have about not starting until after the first of the month because of hydro rates. I was told last week on one of my Zoom meetings that that's changed now and that doesn't, that's not in effect anymore. Um, that you could start it on the 15th and you pay from when you start. So just something that you might want to clarify anyways, because I don't know if that's right or not, but uh, that was put to me when I was talking to another municipality and they said, oh, you're wrong on the startup. You can start it on the 15th. It doesn't cost you any extra. But uh, um, I know everyone has the same worries of what to do and with the numbers going the way they are, but 
um, you know, it's up to council, but I just, I'm still on the page of, you know, the kids don't have a lot to do and um, the school is right beside it there. There might be an opportunity for them to make more use of it to socially distance. Um, but I don't want to see things go south either. So go ahead, Barry. You're muted. Yeah, at the present time, the way things are going, I would just see, soon see it shut down because I don't want to be a counselor or part of a council that says go ahead and uh, then people get COVID and it comes back like, why did you people do this as a local government? Um, and, if, and if things keep going the way they are, you're going to see a lot more things shut down. And, uh, you know, we, we got to protect ourselves, our kids, and everyone else that's that's out there. So personally, I, I'd say shut, shut it down for the winter. It's, you know, in Toronto there, I see they've, they've shut hockey right down all together. And I know it's a, it's a hard thing, but where do we go? But I think we still have to be realistic. We don't have a lot of COVID in this area and, I, and we don't want it neither. Okay. All right, is there any other comments from council with regards to the ice, I guess? We'll, that's the first thing we gotta decide here. We can put it off for like, I'm glad we prolonged it as far as we normally would have been had the plant started now and be starting skating next week. And uh, um, we've already held it off for that. Um, I think at the last meeting we talked about November 1st, I'm hearing from Barry, like shut it down altogether. <laughs> um, it's totally up to council, go ahead, Hart. Yeah, I was going to say, um, I, I see Councillor Pomeroy's point in the fact that if the rink isn't going to get used, then why would it be opened? Uh, my one main concern is, um, given what we're going through here and what we could be going through this winter, um, what are people going to be doing if everything's shut down for the next five or six months? And I understand the problem with you know having to open or whatnot, but I think obviously here we don't have a lot of cases and you know if ryan and, and the staff over there do their job and take the precautions and whatnot i can't see why at this point now i'm not speaking a month or two from now why say you couldn't have public skating over there with limited numbers or something like that there needs to be some kind of an outlet for people in our community i understand we're in a pandemic but People still need to be able to live. They can't just sit in their house and stare at a TV or stare at a wall and wait for next instruction from the government on what to do, okay? For a lot of people, that'll drive them crazy. And just from my point of view, I would like to see some avenue or some outlet out there where, yes, if I wanted to get out and do something with my kids or something, at least it was there. I don't have to. If I'm afraid, I'll stay at home. If I'm afraid of getting something or my kids, I won't bring my kids out. But some people aren't, and I don't want to restrict them from having that ability. Thank you, Art. Well said. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I think I'm with you on there as far as it, but the timing, I'm, I would like to know, like I say about that time, like we have to keep putting it off to the first of each month, um, where if there was a possibility, even of December 1st, starting the ice up, so you, or started up, like the 15th or 20th of November. We'll know better by then why, the way numbers are going and what's happening. I did hear the report that Barry was talking about from the Toronto, um, I think it's the rep hockey down there in Toronto. Like they normally have 32,000 registered. This year they only have 16 or 18,000 registered. So they're holding off till December 1st. Um, they didn't cancel it for the season. And I just think it's good to keep the options open. And I totally agree with Hart that, you know, the kids need something to do. And it, there is a, a protocol that you've been given and every other rink is in our county is opening um but they are worried about how to do it and make sure it's done right uh, so i think you know personally you know if it was possible to put it in for december 1st if things don't change too drastically i could support it but uh um, i i've seen another hand there uh, um did somebody else go ahead larry and was there anyone mm -hmm. Dave? Yeah, through, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, 
Um, I'm in agreement with both comments and, and it's kind of hard to actually just draw a line in the sand and say, no. Um, I think we're taking the right approach where we're prolonging uh, possibly the 1st of December. Uh, by that time, uh, the province may be telling you uh, what you're gonna do anyway. So by prolonging, I think we're taking the right direction. Uh, time will tell. And if it's not as bad as how they're predicting, then look at, look at uh, putting ice in and giving uh, the school and whoever could use the ice, whether it's uh, some hockey, uh, we are getting questioned by some of the hockey, why, why we can't um, you know, open up as in other uh, municipalities are, as you stated. So um, I think we're taking the wise step at the present time to hold off. And at some point, yes, we need to make the decision uh, shut down down or, or to start to um, get some ice in there. So that's my thoughts. Hey, thank you, Larry. And I think that's what Ryan's report does allow the flexibility if we do decide to put it in. But go ahead, Dave. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first of all, Ryan, thank you for your report. In-depth report, appreciated. Um, it's a hard decision when it comes to the arena. Very hard decision because there's safety involved. I was under the impression that we made this decision at our last council meeting that we were going to wait till the end of December or sometime in December before we decided because unless things turned around and we got a different message from the province. That being said, in your report, Ryan, we talk about the outside arena and staff's involvement in preparing it. And to my knowledge, we've never even talked about the outside arena yet. So thank you for bringing that forward because it's another decision council's gonna have to make. And once again, it's outside and everybody is gonna be social distancing and so on and so forth, maybe. So it, it's another decision. So something we have to talk about, whether we like it or not, we gotta make a decision if we're gonna not have an indoor arena, are we gonna allow an outdoor arena? I don't know. Is that the Cordova rank? Brian, or is that the other? Um, oh. the, through, you, Mr. through you, Mr. Mayor, um, I did include in the report. Um, I did have a conversation with the HBM Proud uh, Committee, and uh, they did confirm that they weren't going to be um, planning a fire and ice festival based on the uh, public health recommendations. Uh, however, we did talk about um, setting up the outdoor rink, and uh, we uh, we had a discussion that. You know, since that the ice wasn't being installed in the arena, um, is there an opportunity to to help or assist with setting up the outdoor arena? So that would be at council's discretion. Uh, what I can tell you is that at this current time, um, the maximum occupancy would be 25 people on that outdoor arena right now. That's that's what's uh, allowed. So if council did decide to do that, um, the, it it would be a maximum of 25 people. So. I did suggest in the report that um, staff potentially could assist in the setup and maintaining that outdoor arena, not only in Havelock, but also assist the fire department um, in Cordova. Um, but I, I'd still have to talk to uh, the fire chief about that as well. Yeah, the outdoor rinks are gonna be good discussion because if they're not monitored by us or if it looks like we're taking part in it, um, that'll be some good discussion on its own just with them two rinks. Uh, um, for future, I would think uh, so. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's 10 and 10 indoor unorganized events and 25 outdoors. Is it not right now? That's and that could, change, right. that could change this week. That's right. Um, it's considered similar to like a, a playground, right? It's an unsuper or an unmonitored uh, uh, facility. So, but that, that's something we can look at in the future as well. And uh, while, uh, while I'm on here, I just wanted to uh, just clarify the, uh, the starting up of the plant on the first of the month. That is um, a municipal or a township policy that uh, council adopted uh, years back. Um, so if it's changed in terms of the hydro rates, we just have to amend that policy to allow staff to do that. 
okay, well, it's something to look into. And, and these outdoor rinks, we got, hopefully we have another month or so before we get freeze up of them because they don't usually start doing them until in December anyway. So yeah. um, maybe we can tie that in with a special, like we'll specifically talk to the rinks because whether it's ice, ice indoor or outdoor uh, at the next, as the meetings progress, because everything's changing daily. Um, mm -hmm. But it is good that the rest of the report allows flexibility for if something pops up or whatever, I think. But uh, council got anything else to speak to this report? Go ahead, Dave. The report in general or just the, the yeah. arena? Yeah, like the report in general, it's, uh, it covers a lot of things there. Well, I guess, yes, it does cover a lot of things. So I guess I would ask uh, Ryan if he's looking for a specific uh, motion today, or is this just a report to receive? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, just to receive at this point, um, I guess I was just looking if council wanted to uh, make any decisions on the reopening of the arena or anything. Uh, I would just need direction on that. But uh, the report just basically uh, states that things will uh, remain the same. Um, and it just provides some information on what the staff will be working on um, over the next couple months. So one last question, if I might, Mr. Mayor, at the present time then, Ryan, do we have, do we still have a part-time employee? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, that contract uh, ended uh, last weekend. So that person uh, is, is now uh, her, the employment is, uh, has been uh, ended, so. Thank you. Okay, Barry, go ahead. Yeah, I'll make a motion we receive the report. Okay, moved by Councillor Pomeroy that we received the report. Uh, seconded by Councillor Webb. All in favor? That's carried. Um, if you have any questions, I'll just remind you again to put your hand in front of you. There, sometimes with all the screens, it's, it's hard to pick it up if you just do a little like this. I might miss it. So, just to help me out, uh, it's best to put it right in front of your face so I'll see it. Um, thank you. Yeah, just like that, Dave. Um, okay, so. The next report, uh, thank you, Ryan. That's good. Thank you. Um, Peter Lawson with regards to snow plowing the boulevard. Yes, through you, through you uh, Mayor Martin. Um, I was, we've had quite a discussion over the last few years on the boulevards being plowed or not or removed. Uh, I was talking uh, with uh, uh, CAO Bob and Joni and uh, we kind of thought this might be a good way to see the what the actual residents uh, would prefer. Yeah, so I've spoken to this before, and I, you know, the boulevards have always been a challenge. Um, I do worry about pushing it onto their property, even if they agree to that, because we won't be able to take snow away again. Because sure enough, we'll take the grass with it. Um, then we'll be repairing everything. So at least when it's on the boulevard, it can be taken away easily when we get a chance, and. During the discussion two years ago, I was sent over to Norwood to look at how they handle it. And they handle it the same way we do. They store the snow on the boulevard and they take it away from the boulevard when they get a chance and people shovel out to the edge of the boulevard. Um, that's what was said at the public meeting when we were doing these things, but uh, they seem to be a challenge for us. And uh, as long as people realize we might not be able to take the snow off their front lawn when it's pushed to there, um, that's what has to be clear because as soon as you start taking their grass with the snow, They'll be calling you in the spring to get their lawn sodded. So, um, just a thought. So, what's council's thoughts of this? Go ahead, Barry. Yeah, I basically agree with everything you've said there, Mr. Mayor. Um, if we push it off the boulevard onto the onto the lawns, you know, we, we're open to legal liabilities too. So, I I'm for leaving it on the boulevards until we can get a chance to. Um, take it away, you know, it is, after all the snow plowing has been done and they're caught up. So I think that's our safest, safest way anyway. Okay. Um, Larry, did you have something? Yeah, just curious. Uh, have we always removed snow off the boulevards? When we had the opportunity. Go ahead, Peter. Yes, exactly. Through you, Mayor Martin. Yeah, we have when we get caught up with our main uh, downtown uh, core and uh, our winter maintenance is, has been caught up, then we do go around and get the, the boulevards cleaned up. Uh, uh, years past, uh, we were plowing the boulevards 
And then we started using them actually for what uh, what the mayor is actually stating and the, they actually are for snow storage, as I understand. And then when they do melt or if we can't get it picked up, then it drains back into our storm. Um, but uh, we've had a lot of uh, residents uh, ask why we're not doing that anymore. And if, uh, if we could plow it to the edge, uh, the grass pavement boulevard, uh, so they can park their vehicle on it. So that's kind of why we wanted to bring this up to council and see what your thoughts were, so. Yeah. I don't think I missed anyone there. The harp's the last one I've seen there, so. Yeah, I was just gonna make a motion to go ahead with the survey. Okay. Moved by Councillor Webb that we go with the survey and staff can hear a seconder for that. Seconded by Councillor Ellis. All in favor? Okay, go ahead. Uh, that's approved. Um, so yeah, go ahead with the survey. And uh, um, like I say, I would stress that we won't be removing snow off front lawn. You may need to understand that. So, um, okay. All right, thank you, Peter. Um, the next report here is with regard to the sidewalk on Smith Drive. Yes, so uh, the, I was uh, up this morning actually on Smith Drive and they did a fantastic job. There, There is one little uh, section of sidewalk that wasn't installed um, just due to the natural gas being uh, put into the building. It's so uh, that, uh, that'll be done after the natural gas is uh, is uh, put into the building. So, but yes, the sidewalks look great. That's good. Okay, I didn't get up there on the weekend, but uh, go ahead, Barry. Yeah, I was up on Friday too, Peter. It, it looks really good. And um, they're really coming along real well with the building there too. So hopefully it'll be open before the new year. Yes, uh, they're planning on uh, moving in, as I understand, on um, in the month of December, hopefully before Christmas. So uh, the intention is uh, for public work staff as well to uh, there's quite a pile of topsoil uh, on site up there that uh, so uh, hopefully we can do that. Uh, it's screened enough or it's nice enough topsoil. We can use our own backhoe and uh, do the boulevard in the backside of the sidewalk there as well and get the seed down. So. Thanks, Pete. All right, so I'll leave that report. If there are no questions or comments, we have a mover. Uh, moved by Councillor Pomeroy <laughs> and seconded by Councillor Webb. All in favor? And that's there. Thank you. Um, the next report is uh, with regards to the wastewater treatment plant roof maintenance. Um, go ahead. Yes, as the, as the report states there, it was just recently brought to uh, the staff's attention of the, the maintenance on the facilities at the wastewater treatment plant. And uh, I've already met with one contractor. I have another contractor coming this afternoon to get to hopefully four prices there. Um, uh, the main plant, uh, like the report states, is just a, a, some shingles. It could be a bad batch of shingles, but a uh, bad bundle, I should say. But uh, hopefully we just get those repairs. There's a piece of fascia that's come off. And uh, in the other building, uh, we're looking maybe at doing steel uh, so we don't get into the shingles uh, down the road again. But uh, um, price-wise, uh, maybe we can just shingle half the building uh, this year and then get it in budget for next year to... Um, do the other half or get it uh, repaired properly. Okay, thanks, Peter. The one question I had when this, when I first seen this on the agenda was why it was through public works and not facilities. Um, but then I was told that it's always been this way, that uh, the facilities with regard to anything with public works are still with public works and all of the buildings actually, and only the, um, I think there's only eight that facilities in charge of. Um, I'm not sure. So that's what was, that's what I was told. So, um, so you've been looking after this instead of facilities, I guess. Yes, I uh, have. And I, I wasn't aware that was uh, in the public works department either, uh, Mayor Martin. So uh, I was talking to uh, Ryan Andrews and yeah, he, uh, he was one that pointed out to me that it is mine. So I didn't want to step on any toes by looking after it. And uh, cause I thought it would have been the facilities as well, but uh, no, I, uh, I'm, uh, getting things that are hopefully repaired here in the next month or, or less. So we'll be ready for the winter season. Yep. So that might be something 
look at in the future. Um, go ahead, Deputy Mayor Terrell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's what I was going to suggest. I think we better have a look at this. I think the roads department has their hands full without uh, without looking after facilities. Um, so I would hope that council would look at this, or staff would look at this, and try and try and rearrange this. Uh, I don't think that's their department at all. So I know it hasn't been in the past, according to what we understand, but um, I don't think it has anything to do with roads. So maybe we can look at that in the future. Thank yeah. you. Ryan, you popped up there. You got something to add? Yeah, through you, Mr. Martin, um, or Mayor Martin. Um, yeah, I did I did become aware of this, uh, and I did uh, let Peter know that uh, it hasn't been under facilities in the past. It's not under that envelope. Uh, I think it was the uh, preference of the uh, previous director that they had uh, the responsibility of maintaining their own facilities uh, since they're there most of the time. But uh, if anything was to change, uh, I just have to, we'd have to go through the proper channels and let me know. Um, and I just wanted to say that if there's anything, um, Peter or any, or any other facilities that uh, require any attention and I can provide some assistance, I'd be more willing to help out there. So um, it's similar to like the public works garage um, and, and the fire department, like uh, the fire chief maintains his own facilities. So this is really no different. It's, it's the eight facilities that uh, have always been traditionally looked after by uh, the Parks and Recreation Department. So, but uh, just wanted to add in there that if you ever, if you ever have any assistance or, or need some help getting some quotes, or getting some repairs done, uh, either by myself or externally, we can, we can certainly help out there. Hey, Barry, go ahead. Yeah, Ryan, this is towards you. Is uh, I think you were still uh, up the head of uh, Public Works when this was reported. And uh, according to the aqua anyway, and it was left and our operator over there finally got a hold of, of the office and um, you know, wanted to know what was going on. So anyway, whether it was your department then or not, it, it was then and you're putting it on, on Peter now. So it was a job that wasn't done. That's that's all I'm saying. And hopefully we get this thing straightened out. Okay, so it sounds like we have. Um, so anyways, we'll uh, move on. So um, you've cleared that process. It sounds like Brian can help you there if you need it, Peter. Um, mm -hmm. yep. And we'll... Uh, uh, move on. Councillor Ellis, go ahead. Just motion to approve the recommendation by the manager of public works. Okay, moved by Councillor Ellis, seconded by Councillor Pomeroy. All in favor? That's carried. Um, so next we have Laura back in with regards to lot reconfiguration here. That's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff to look at there. I was trying to figure it out there. I didn't quite understand it, but uh, um, I'll go ahead, Laura. Thank you very much, Mayor Martin. Um, so this application has actually been in the works since 2017. Um, the application is to reconfigure 11 lots into five larger lots that all meet the standard size with permitted frontage for a seasonal residential zone. Um, in 2017, a deeming bylaw was put, it, put a holding symbol on these properties until the consent was finalized. So more or less, this has kind of been approved in principle um, in 2017. Uh, so my recommendation is that council recommend approval for this consent application. Okay, yeah, this one's been around a long time, like you say, and uh, um, it's nice to see it finally moving forward. Councillor Webb, go ahead. Go with the recommendation. Or do you, well, you move to the recommend, Mr. Mayor? Yeah. Uh, by Councillor Webb and seconded by Deputy Mayor Giroux. With the comment? comment. With the comment? Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Laura, for your report. Like the mayor has uh, mentioned, it is uh, long and detailed, and it has been around for a long time. 
And I think the reason in, in my recollection, why it went down to so small lots. So we could have a regular shoreline lot size. So everything would fit. There wouldn't be any discrepancies or any minor variances that had to take place or anything. So everything fits. And that's why I uh, second the motion. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right. All in favor of the motion? And the series. So the next one is uh, application 5020. Uh, Go ahead, Laura. Thank, thank you very much. So this application is to reconfigure lots for lot additions to two properties. Um, all properties are currently a little bit undersized um, and that will continue on even with the lot additions. So they will require minor variances to recognize a deficiency of either frontage or size. Um, but I reviewed it and it is considered to be truly minor and it does stay in keeping with the four tests of the minor variance. Uh, for this reason, it's recommended that council recommend approval for this consent application. All right, um, council's had the report. Uh, lots of doubling going on there, but it looks like it all fits in. Um, Councilor Webb, go ahead. Yeah, motion to approve the recommendation, Mr. Mayor. You can move by Councilor Webb and seconded by, we have a seconder, Councilor Ellis. All in favor? Question on that. Oh, you had a question, sorry, go ahead. So Laura, I tried to get hold of you on Friday to ask you some questions and I wasn't successful. So I would have been a lot more comfortable if I saw any, the sketches that I have, although the numbers are all in here, and this is supposed to be a technical severance, but they're all small. So the waterfront is small. So without anything being done, you're going to have to have a minor variance, right? That's right. So are we indicating when we do this that we're going to be okay with a minor variance? So through you, Mr. Mayor, typically if council will be supportive of a consent application, there is a general agreement in principle to the minor variances because it's it will be null you'll have knowledge of this um, of these properties being deficient in size or frontage. Um, you're not necessarily agreeing to it because we don't have the final documents yet, but and it will come back for for debate again. It'll go through the board pass. Yes. So. So, uh, Laura, the reason I tried to get a hold of you was because your sketches, there are buildings on the property where the, where the sketches were provided, but there's no, there's no building envelope on the sketches. So it's really hard to know without being on the land itself where the buildings are. Yeah, so uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, that too will get picked up for the, in the minor variance. At this stage in the game for their consent application, they are not required to have a survey done. So we don't know the exact setbacks yet. Um, if anything is a little bit too close to the water, too close to a, a lot line, we can address that in the minor variance. Um, and that's the reason that I left that condition in there to accommodate for any deficiencies that may come up. A lot for me in, in, entails my problem because you're asking me to okay a minor variance before I have the information. So through you, Mr. Mayor, um, you're only agreeing in principle with the information that you have right now. So if that information, because like I said, a survey isn't required by the County of Peterborough at this point, so we don't have the exact setbacks nor do they ask for that information when we get it. And if it's way too close to a property line for you, you can, you can say that you have an issue with that at that time and they can amend their, um, their consent application if that's what they wish to do. Thank you. Yeah, so it still goes through when you do the four tests, when they do actually apply, the surveys will be done and, the, and there's, um, we'll have all the, all the material that we need then to make a decision on them separately. That's correct. Okay. All right, so um, I'm looking for a mover of this or? You've already. 
I did did I do that? I got the mover and the second. All in favor of the motion then? Sorry. Um, so that's approved. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Okay. Next we have uh, Margaret. Oh, we lost her. Oh, there she is. I, you moved around on the screen. Hi, Margaret. Nice to see you doing a report today or two. Thank you. So, um, go ahead. So thank you, Mayor Martin and members of council. Um, my report today is about the clear garbage bag report summary. At the April 6th meeting, a resolution was passed for staff to commence a clear garbage bag program within the village ward and the township of Havelock, Belmont, Bethune. The program details are proposed to be the following, beginning with curbside collection within the village ward. Residents will continue to be allowed one garbage bag per household. Garbage tags will continue to be required. Residents will be allowed one opaque privacy bag within the clear garbage bag. Privacy bags can be a plastic grocery bag or a small white kitchen catcher. Garbage bag contamination is currently being allowed within surrounding municipalities. Per, uh, contamination will allow for a certain percentage of the garbage bag to have recyclable materials. Recommendation for the township is 10% allowance. Compost and organic materials will be allowed within the garbage bag as the township does not provide an organic curbside collection program. Composting at home and at the six line transfer station will continue to be recommended through our platforms. The recommended soft launch of this program is January 2021 until the end of June 2021. A soft launch means that residents will change over to clear bags with no other restrictions. The recommended hard launch of this program is Thursday, July 1st, 2021. Recommendations for the transfer stations are that attendants will inspect garbage bags for 10% contamination allowance and attendants will turn away garbage for over contamination. The financial impact of this program as discussed with staff at Waste Connections of Canada is that the township will likely not see an increase to our current contract. Once a program is finalized, Waste Connections of Canada will provide more details regarding the pricing. Additional financial impact may come from the training of the transfer station attendants uh, for the new criteria. Thank you, Margaret, and well done. Um, yeah, we so there's not we're not reinventing the wheel here. Every municipality, except for one, I think, has uh, implemented clear bag, and a lot of them have found it's actually a savings as far as the transporting of the bins have went down dramatically um, as far as what's going to transfer. Um, hopefully that's what they mean and it, you know, it'll go that way and uh, um, it was supposed to start on Earth Day and with everything that's going on I appreciate all the work that you've done here to try and get something moving here and, and the soft start is probably a good time because it'll let our seasonal residents uh, um, our seasonal population get adjusted in the spring um, when they come back so I'll open it up to council um, Barry go ahead yeah, in the village board, only one bag allowed per household. Um, right now, what is the limit on it? Um, so right now, the limit for curbside for residents is one garbage bag per household. So that will not change. Boy, oh boy, it must have, uh, everybody must not look after that because a lot of people have two garbage bags. Out. Um, and I was under the impression that it was two years ago anyway, unless it's been changed. And if it hasn't been, um, it, you know, there should be a change over there too, because one, one bag per house, like it don't bother me, but I mean, I'm looking at people with, with children and, and uh, so on and so forth. And, and a lot of these, places will like one bag would not be sufficient. Heck, I don't do a half a bag ourselves, but that isn't the point. I'm looking after everybody else here too. Okay, um, Hart had a comment and then I'll go back to you, Margaret. I think, I think Margaret wanted to respond there. Okay. Go ahead, Margaret. Go ahead, so Margaret. I understand that one bag may be quite a restriction for some families. Um, however, we highly recommend that recycling be taken place for each family 
and that if recycling is done accordingly, one bag is not a large restriction. Additionally, if the household does have more than one bag per week, they have the option to take those bags to our transfer stations. I know that. Okay. Well, that, that, uh, that's what you got it there. Let, let, got it there, uh, Councillor Webb, and then you can go ahead. Well, that, that's my point. We pay for this service in the, in the municipal ward, in the village ward, and um, it's no additional cost, you know, to what it has been for two bags. And hopefully we can get down to one bag. Um, but I, I just can't. I that's I can't. What's happening. Sorry, Barry. That's what's happening in the, in the rest of the areas that have done it is they found that most of it is going to recycle and it actually does make the numbers go down. That's why the costs have went down in all the other municipalities. And that's why we're speaking to the city right now, because if they're not gonna get on board, they're filling up Pensford when we're um, doing our part to try and cut it down. Um, so, oh, sorry, go ahead, finish up and then go to heart. I think we're doing our part, but uh, for to just say one bag, you know, flat out because most people do recycle in in uh, in the village ward. There's the odd pe you know odd people that don't, but um, I don't know. It's it seems like a quite a restriction right off the bat. Okay, uh, Margaret, if you can finish that up, and then I'll go to Hart. Sorry, Hart. Uh, if we would like to review the household allowance of one to two bags, then we can review the contract that we have with Waste Connections and determine if a cost increase will occur. I can't see, I can't see a cost increase would occur when they already are doing that. It, you know, with the, with the green bags. Okay. Okay, Hart, go ahead, sorry. Go oh, me? Yeah. So, sorry, Jimmy, keep, it keeps freezing on me here. No, um, yeah, I was kind of along the same lines as Barry. I always thought that um, you're allowed one bag. You're allowed to put out as many bags as long as they had, they were tagged. Well, it's something to check into because if they're not monitoring that, and that's why we have so much going out. It'd be good to check into it, like Margaret said. We no, should... but, at, but at the same oh, you're probably... time, I agree with Barry in that one bag I, for a lot of families, I don't think is a, is a lot, right? Now I can see capping it at maybe say three or four because you don't want people emptying their basement into garbage bags for a dollar bag. But at the same time, I think we should be looking yeah, maybe at more of say a two to three bag limit. As long as the bags are tagged and they're paid for, I can't see why we shouldn't be taking the garbage away. I mean, you're already asking people to pay for it. And now you're telling them you're limiting what they can actually take away. Hey, so. Okay, we're just looking at the environment maybe people can, like it's working everywhere else. So if we need three and everyone else is getting away with one, that's what I'm asking is like, we need to check into it. But go ahead, Margaret. Um, I would be happy to check in with Waste Connections regarding how many bags are allowed curbside and discuss with them what sort of impact we'll receive um, if we do increase our limit. Um, I understand that our village ward residents are paying for that curbside collection and that they also pay for tags to get it collected. We have to think about the cost of taking that additional waste to for disposal. So that's part of the reason for limitation. So, okay, so you, it's a, so the report's there and it's the same as most anyway. So uh, we can check into the numbers there and see. Uh, maybe that's why we're paying so much. And maybe if it was put back to one, we would have, they would lower their, their charges to us. So go ahead, Perry. Well, I don't think you have to phone waste connections. We should have some literature there stating how many bags yeah. we have. Um, I don't want to open another can of, you know, another beehive or whatever, just because uh, of what we've been doing. And then all of a sudden we're cut off, you know, completely, basically. But, you know, like I said before, and hard to say, you know, like maybe two bags for a limit to even even try to start the program and educate the people on on recycling. Um, okay, well, I'll leave it at that. 
Yeah, maybe you could bring that policy back to us, Margaret, as far as what we have. Because if we do have a policy of one bag and we're, we're not doing that, that's what I'm hearing. It needs to be looked at because the policy shouldn't be there. If we want two bags, that's up to council. But uh, um, if we have a policy in place, like you're saying, and, and it's being it's not being looked at, um, there's no sense having it. So, but did we pay by the ton? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so, okay, Dave, go ahead. Um. Without getting off the topic here, I, I'd like to know if we're going to start this program or not. This is the, what Margaret's brought forward. Yeah. And if we're going to start the, the new program with the dates provided, I would make a motion to that. The number of bags, it is, my understanding has only been one thus far. And if we're getting away with more than that, I guess we're lucky. But as you know, Mr. Mayor, when we go through this at the county, we're the last municipality in Peterborough County to start this program. Perhaps we should provide the numbers of the other programs or the other townships, the numbers of the last waste disposal. We get it every month at the county here. We're the last one to go on. And I can guarantee you, if there's going to be more than one bag, two, three bags, there's going to be extra money involved because they're not they go by ton and if if they want to pay for it that that's fine that's up to them if they want 10 bags but but there will be a cost involved that's right okay go ahead Hart and then Larry I just I've heard you talk about this Jim in the past in terms of waste costs or is that are you we talking like a total cost in terms of what we pay or are we talking at a cost of what it, it costs for in-town garbage pickup it's what we're paying at the in total to get rid of it at best. Yeah, well, like it's I'm not, saying so I'm like zero dumber, <clears throat> zero dumber has went down to like forty percent in <laughs> capacity. So that reflects on on the bench yep. that we're talking county stuff, um, not our township, but it all comes back to the same who's paying the dollar. And if, if our numbers go down, it, it's good for us. It's mm -hmm. uh, good for the town. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I just I think I, I you know I, I I understand we're trying to get numbers down, but when I'm out at our dump and I, you know I I don't know the only other dump I really been to is the Norwood dump. I find just even the two there are completely different. In that Norwood is a town, it's it's a town based municipality, so most of their garbage is picked up by garbage trucks, if not all of it, right? When I go to ours. We have nothing but cottagers coming in with trailers of construction material and you know things like that that i think a lot of these other municipalities they don't have to eat costs like that you know and i understand yeah, they, that we're, we're trying well i'm just saying i i'd be surprised if i went to norwood's dump that i would see as much contracting waste come in as when we came to hbm stuff so yeah most of the contract well, i don't think you know bring apples and oranges here in a way we aren't as far as the population that goes into our dump because we don't have garbage or transfer station because we don't have garbage pickup, but they do have for building materials and things. Most have that in their waste site, so it saves it from going to Bensford. I forget how many years are left at Bensford, but it's not long until it's going to be shut down and then we'll be shipping to Michigan or wherever because we don't have any land to to keep going. So that's why everybody's doing this right now is to try and get ahead of it. Maybe we, maybe you know, incineration was the thing that's been talked about. But th for today, this is a report that uh, Margaret put in. And I think, like Dave said, you know, if we want to get it going. And the uh, as far as the number of bags, we can review that and see whether it's one or two. Or, um, But the way I look at it is if everybody else can get away with it, we're doing something wrong if we're not keeping up too. It's, uh, it, it makes a big difference on the recycling end of things. And I know we're recycling. And I it's a learning thing for me because I've been looking at some of these things that can go in and what can't go in and um, it's amazing. Uh, it's complicated. That's why it's a, it's a long startup. But uh, go ahead, Barry. And uh, like the transfer station, uh, bag allowance is unlimited. So if you got 10 bags to go to the, the transfer station, fine. And if you got two bags in, uh, in Hamlock, 
he can only send one. And then you got to take the other one down to the transfer station. Yeah. And it's all in, it's all in our pickup. That's what it gets back to. It's all in our pickup. So I would just like Margaret to check in the paperwork here. Don't ruffle the feathers with the people that are picking it up on how many, because we are paying for the service in town. Plus yep. we're paying for, we're paying additional service. Let's put it that way in town. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's what I would like check. So if we could get it moving, if we could get a motion today to get this moving, um, Larry, were you, did you have something to add? Uh, yep, I did so. Uh, <clears throat> well, first of all, I think uh, we should have Margaret check the policy to see what we're legally doing or should be doing. As far as expanding the number of bags, I, I think we're going backwards here. Uh, although, if we're allowed to, that's what it should be. But I'm just saying to, to go the other direction that defeats what we're all about here with the clear bag. So um, check the policy and if it says one bag, it's one bag. If it's two bags, it's two bags. But we need to carry on and get on board here. We even get kind of rid ridiculed a little bit for not being on board from the general public. So let's get on with it. So, so I'll look, did you have anything to add, Hart? And then we'll move on here. We'll get a motion that we uh, approve the recommendation and we can look at the policy that's in place for the village. Um, and we can look at the rest of the, um, you can just check up with the rest of the municipalities if you get a chance. But for now, we do need to get moving on this. And uh, um, I think that date to start, that's why it's a soft start, because there is a learning, it's a learning experience. So, um, so if I could get a motion that we we move ahead with what's suggested here. Deputy Mayor Giroux, moving it. Second the motion, Mr. Mayor. Seconded by Councillor Ellis. Any more questions or comments? All in favor? Okay, thank you. That's great, Margaret. And then you had another one here with regards to large article curbside collection. Yes, thank you, Mayor Merton and members of council. At the May 19th council meeting, a resolution was passed to research a large article curbside collection within the village ward. The proposed program details are as followed. The launch of the program will be in spring of 2021. The week long event will be held once early April and once in early spring. The event will follow the current model of the leaf and yard collection within the village. Residents will have items placed curbside on the Monday by 7 a.m. of the week of collection. Residents will be required to purchase a ticket or stickers to be placed on the items as identifiers for the collection staff. Charges are recommended to be $20 for the first item and $5 for each additional item. It is recommended that the white good items with or without Freon not be included in collection as the township currently provides a white good day event at no cost to residents. It's recommended that the white goods day event possibly be held more than once a year at our six line transfer station. If the township would like to hold a white goods week collection for curbside, an entirely separate collection week is recommended by the Waste Connection Staff of Canada. The financial impact of this program, Waste Connections of Canada have recommended that the first two events be charged at an hourly rate as demand for this event is unknown. General pricing will begin with one truck and two staff at a rate of $175 per hour. Waste Connections of Canada staff estimate that collection within the village ward may take between 20 to 40 hours. The potential cost could range from 3,500 to 7,000. Some of our costs will be recuperated by residents purchasing tickets for the disposal of their items. Thank you. All right, thank you. And yeah, there's uh, it's probably, this is probably a budget item because uh, you know, I could see where it could get a little crazy. Like they say, they haven't done it before. Um, so it'd be interesting to see if a week would even do it to get rid of everything. So, um, What's council's thoughts of this? Uh, it was brought up at our previous, or at a meeting here a couple of meetings ago. Go ahead, Barry. Um, yes, I think that most people take their stuff down to the, the to the waste site, the, the large items, mm -hmm. if, if they can. And it seems quite a, quite a price here for, for to do the village ward. 
and uh, I can't see there being that that much uh, for for twenty to forty hours a week, and it could be like our our white goods day, you know, at the at the six line transfer station, and it would be a lot cheaper for people to pay. Uh, you know, ten or fifteen dollars for to have it taken to the to the waste site or to the transfer station than it would be to hire these people for to come into town and then you're eliminating to the people that live in the village ward, you're not giving it a, a chance to the everybody else in the in the in the HBM township. Because they're gonna have to bring theirs to the sixth line. So why, you know. All we all we have in have locked board at the present time is garbage pickup. Yeah. If we, if we have white goods day, we take it down to the sixth line, and this this price here is way out to way out to lunch as far as I'm concerned. I think some of these things were to do with uh, the people that don't have a vehicle or some a way of getting it there. I think Hart brought it forward, so go ahead, Hart, and then Wendelin. Yeah, yeah, I was the one that brought this forward. Thank you very much, Margaret. It's uh, quite an in-depth and uh, very detailed report. Um, yeah, it was it was actually brought up to me by uh, a village resident, just uh, as a way to possibly alleviate the constant garbage we see on street corners, uh, alleyways, and everywhere else throughout throughout the village. Um, I agree with Councillor Pomeroy. I didn't think the uh, the price would come in that high. So that does uh, pose a uh, quite a big problem. Uh, but like I said, I, it was more of an idea to try and um, encourage people that uh, the mayor referred to, you know, maybe some older people that don't have a truck or don't have a trailer or can't move couches that, you know, might be inclined to throw something in their backyard or even their front yard and let it sit there to get it off their property to try and make the town look a little better. Now I realize there's, we have our deadbeats here in town that'll always put garbage on the sidewalk, but I was looking possibly trying this as a pilot program maybe once. Yeah, but uh, um, the cost has come in uh, fairly high, so um, I'll just leave it up to the rest of council in terms of how they want to proceed. Hey, Wendelin, go ahead. I was just going to say this might be a good item to defer to budget um, currently in the 2020 levy for the village uh, ward. There's $47,000 a year charged there for garbage pickup. So $7,000 on a currently a $47,000 budget for the village ward is a huge percentage increase. So we need to have further discussions on that. Yeah, so that'll be good discussion at budget, I think. I think we could just receive this report and, uh, and bring it forward at budget as far as it's there's any other thoughts with it. Um, is that what you're saying, Wendelin? Okay, Barry, go ahead. I'll make a motion we receive this report. Okay, moved by Councillor Pomeroy that we receive this report and seconded by Councillor Webb. Do you have a comment? Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Margaret, you did well. Thank you. Okay, Bob, go ahead. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin, just before uh, our administrative assistant leaves the meeting. I just wanna commend her for uh, bringing those reports forward. Um, she has a passion for, uh, for waste management and she took the initiative to do the research on these items. And it's her first time bringing reports forward to a council meeting. So she has now learned the joy of presenting to council. It's uh, yeah. well done. And it wasn't that bad, was it, Margaret? No, it wasn't. <laughs> okay. Good report, right. Margaret, good report. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay, we'll move on then. Uh, next we have the broader public sector energy reporting from Wendelin. So this report basically was compiled by um, Brianna. So it's been historically put my name on it because I'm the treasurer, but um, it's something that Amber has done in the past um, but she's off on maternity leave. So um, this is just a requirement each year to bring it forward in a council setting. Okay. Um, 
All right, then I saw the heart there, but uh, Harry, go ahead. Make a motion we receive. Okay, moved by Councilor Pomeroy that we receive this report. Seconder. Councilor Webb, comments or questions? All in favor? And that's carried. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next, we move into the Oak Lake uh, project uh, um, restoration work. Tender. Um, yeah, but I just basically need a resolution by council to expend the funds from the reserve. Okay. Um, so I'll look for a motion with regards to that. Barry, go ahead. Yeah, I have a question. Um, in fact, I'd just like to clear things up here because I was probably one of the people that out in one of my travels that noticed that archers were doing the work back at, at Oak Lake. And I came in and I asked a couple of people in the office, you know, it, I didn't ever see it uh, going for tender. And I never got an answer that it went to tender. But anyway, then after about a, two weeks ago here, I think I, I spoke with Bob and I found out that Cambium had taken over the, the project and uh, they have now spelled out all the, uh, all the details of that, but I don't feel that it's fair, you know, to, to Wendelin for to not have her involved, you know, she's looking after the money here and um, she couldn't answer my question. Bob couldn't answer my question for a while. But now that I got this, it's it's all straightened out. But there's a lack in communication there that I that I didn't like. It uh, it kind of puts staff on in a in a bad position. So I'm just bringing that to everyone's attention. Yeah, we talked about it on Friday, and I've seen it too. And uh, I don't know, Ryan. Did you want to add anything to that then? If you're there. Yeah, hello, uh, Mayor Martin and Council. Yeah, so um, yeah, there was a couple of errors through this, but uh, but uh, I think Council can be comfortable in knowing that we did reach out to uh, the vendors. Um, there were seven that were invited to tender on that. I think um, we got fair pricing on that. We went with the lowest bid. Um, and uh, the project was completed on schedule, uh, which we had previously made a commitment to the Ministry of Environment on this. So with all the things that were going on this year, um, I guess I did fall short in terms of uh, bringing this to council for resolution prior to, to getting this done. So I apologize for that. But uh, I think that council can be comfortable in knowing that uh, everything within this project uh, was handled properly from Camion's end. And, uh, and archers uh, fulfilled their uh, obligations in terms of uh, doing the remediation work. So uh, at this point, we just need, uh, as Wendelin suggested, we just need a, re um, a resolution from council to expend the funds. Okay, um, Hart and then Barry and Dave. So I'm, I don't know, I'm still unclear on how this didn't go to tender then, or did it? It went to quotation through Cambium if I'm, Correct there, Ryan? Yeah, Cambium conducted the, uh, the quotations and uh, through, uh, through site meetings and through the uh, information provided to each uh, contractor, um, it was recommended that we proceed with the lowest, uh, with the lowest bid for this uh, project as it met all the specifications laid out in the, uh, in the quotation. Yeah, it went out to seven. Okay, so um, Council approves payment to Archer bulk carriers for 76,550 plus applicable taxes and engineering costs. So what are the plus plus? Do we know? Um, so the engineering costs were um, just over $7,000. So it did come in under the $100,000 budget mark um, slightly. I think it was around 96,000 total. Yeah, we did budget for it last. Okay, those are probably numbers we should have in there. 
in terms of a total? I received the, the engineering costs after. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. 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 Um, yeah. Okay. I guess that's it. Okay. Dave? Thank you very much. Uh, I'm just going to say right off the bat that this wasn't held. This wasn't done properly. It wasn't done very professionally. The last I heard of this was when we went in the budget and we, we were given a ballpark park figure what it might have cost. So we put it in the budget. I asked questions all summer on this and I had no, I got no answers. I asked the mayor at one point, what was going on at Oak Lake? I asked the, the, uh, the transfers attendant back there. I couldn't come up with any answers. I kept asking. I went to Hart the other day to apologize for a meeting that I missed or I thought I missed, but I didn't miss it. And we and I asked him, did he know? And he wasn't sure. But then on Friday, I received this. I'm going to tell you I'm upset. We didn't follow the procurement bylaw. I knew nothing about it till after the fact. Now I get another a document here that's got all the times and dates and everything on it after the fact. This, this, this wasn't handled properly at all. And is this gonna happen in the future? Is next year gonna come along and after the fact, we're gonna get a bill for X number of dollars and say, oh, well, we'll fluff this off. We'll pass the bylaw now or, or pass it. This, this, is, this is totally wrong. And I'll tell you, I'm not happy. I think uh, Cambrian didn't do the job. They should have been, we should have been abreast of all this happenings. So where, where there's actions, there are reactions. So I'm not going to make the motion, I'll tell you that. Okay. Thank you, Thank you Dave. And I think Ryan had said what, uh, what happened there. And as far as it going out, it went to seven people who applied for it. And the- It wasn't uh, tendered. It was, ten it was quotation, same thing. Just, uh, um, it was put yeah. Anyways, that's fine. Um, I appreciate your comment. Larry, did you have something? And then I seen Bob popped up. Uh, did you have anything? Oh, sorry. Okay, Bob, go ahead. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. I would certainly like to assure council that this, uh, the process was not followed uh, to its proper conclusion. Um, it was not the way it's supposed to be. Um, having said that, uh, when you read the uh, summary from Cambium, I think we can get some assurance that there's there's nothing nefarious happened here. Cambium went out, uh, offered it up to seven different companies. They got two replies, took the lowest bid. Um, having said that, this process will definitely be reviewed, um, not only from a staff level, for, but from our consultant levels. We cannot have this happening uh, and we need to be more transparent than this. and. That's why this report is on the open agenda today. We're being transparent in explaining that there was an error in the process um, and it will be addressed going forward. Yeah, okay. All right, is there any more comments or questions and what's council's thoughts here? Um, does anybody wanna make a motion one way or the other here? Um, there's payment to be done here and, and as much as it wasn't done by the policy, uh, it was an error, but it's uh, everything was done properly as far as uh, it was put out there for quotation. Um, I think for the most part, Cambium is our go-to. We've used them on all the, anything to do with our transfer stations goes through Cambium. They're a great uh, resource for us. Um, they haven't steered us wrong in the past and it's something that, uh, other than the way the process was done, there was a, one part was skipped. Uh, but unfortunately, or fortunately, the job is done and it was done right. And uh, we should be able to, the mistake has been learned and we can move on. Um, Barry and then Larry. Yeah, I, I'll make a motion that we pay this, but like Bob had said, um, you know, it, there's an error there 
And, you know, when you come back to your own staff, like I, I came to Wendland a couple of times, I went to Bob, and the, they don't know the answers. And, you know, that's what's very, very discouraging in this whole process. So you uh, you can see where where they're coming from too. They, you know, they're they're upset, and uh, I'm upset. Deputy Mayor Drew is upset, and Councillor Allison, probably Councillor Webb too, because the process wasn't followed. But Bob said they're going to look into it, and, and it will go differently from there on. So I'll make a motion that we approve it. Larry, go ahead. Second, the motion with the comment. Um, First of all, um, with the explanation from staff and the fact that um, who we were dealing with, Cambium, as you've said, Mr. Mayor, uh, in the past, we've always had great service and we rely on those good folks. So uh, um, carrying forward, we've learned a lesson here and let's get on with business. Thank you. Okay, I have a mover and a seconder. Art, go ahead. Sorry, just a question. I was reading over. Um, was this money not budgeted for? Like, yeah. it was. Yes, it was in so, the budget. So why are we taking? Why do the auditors require a resolution to expend funds from the reserve? We're going to check into that part of it. I'm going to call them this afternoon because I want to find out how that works. Because maybe we need to adjust our policy because we've already passed it. Um, and yeah. So that's just another piece of it, Hart. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm just, yeah. yeah. Sorry, Jim. The nope. province requires a resolution for any monies coming yeah. from any reserve or reserve fund. Yep. And yep. it's also a requirement under the FER, the financial information return for anything 100,000 and up to be um, a resolution. Okay. But my point was, if we budget it for, why would we have to go to reserve? It's budgeted and put into a reserve until we use it. Yeah, yeah. the budget had determined that it was going to come from the OMPF monies, which yep. is in the administration reserve. Okay, yep. Thank you, Wendell. So we did discuss it on Friday, and thank you, Bob, for coming to this. Uh, it will be taken care of. They do have management meetings and communica communication gap here that could have been dealt with a long time ago, and uh, unfortunately, it was missed. So um, that being said, the process was done and it was done right uh, as far as getting the leachate problem solved and uh, we should just move on. So I have a mover and a seconder. All in favor of this motion. And that's carried. Thank, Thank you. you. So that's it for, uh, oh no, sorry. We got Yeah. So go ahead, Bob. You're mute. There we go. We'll try again. Through you, Mayor Martin. I believe the treasurer has another report uh, before mine. Oh, sorry. Our the benefits are now. Oh, sorry. The benefits. I had a pad, a pad of papers. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Uh, sorry, Wendell. Yeah. So um, we discussed this at um, our closed meeting, and as this is just the resolution coming forward in open council to be confirmed. Okay, thank you. So we have this, council's read this and we've discussed it numerous times. So uh, the recommendation here is that the council approves a revised uh, benefit renewal for 2021 for budgeting purposes. Go ahead, Barry. Yeah, is this for budgeting purposes or can we uh, maybe look at uh at some of our benefits and, and uh, decrease them somehow or another? Well, we already discussed about um, the level of benefits in closed and it was agreed um, that this would come forward as presented. Well, this came forward as yeah. presented, but I'm still not <laughs> but it, happy. But it is uh, a budgetary item because it does get renewed in November. Mm -hmm. So um, that's when the... Um, New agreement takes place. Yeah, yeah, but an, in, an increase of twenty-two, pretty near twenty-three thousand dollars for a year. That's an increase over top of what we've already 
So what is the total on that? Um, I'm sorry, I put you on the spot there, Wendland. Okay, I got it right here. Okay. 181071, is that the... It's in your report there, Wendland. So um, the total cost per annum would be $181,071 per year. $181,000? Yeah, and $71. Yeah, okay. That's a, that's a lot of money for benefits. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're going crazy everywhere, right? Eh? Wow. Okay, uh, Larry, go ahead. Oh, sure, sure you, Mr. Mayor, and I think our previous council meeting, uh, we talked um, briefly about <clears throat> investigating a different uh, company other than Mosey and Mosey. And I think um, if I could ask Bob Angioni to speak to it, I think he was part of our discussion there regarding that. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. Uh, absolutely. We, are, we will be investigating that. Um, at this juncture uh, of renewal, we, we are at the finish line here. Uh, so we do have to carry on with our current provider. Uh, that discussion that we had at that closed session council meeting, we would be looking to renew uh, next year with perhaps a different provider. Thank you, Bob. You're welcome, sir. Dave, go ahead. You're on mute. Thank you, Wendland. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, I'd like to second that motion because it is going to be brought forward at budget. Okay. Thank you. So I have a mover and a seconder. Any more comments or questions? All in favor of the motion? And that's carried. Thank, Thank you, you. Sorry for skipping over you there. Um, so next we have the uh, um, development charges uh, quotation. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. Um, this report outlines the request for quotation um, that was advertised with respect to development charges. We received two submissions uh, from one from Watson and Associates in the amount of 35,000 plus HST and the second from Clark Consulting Services in the amount of $34,204 plus HST. Both very close. Uh, the budgeted amount for this item was 50,000 and both these companies, uh, we did have a ranking, as you can see, attached to the report. Both of these companies scored well. Uh, there was a slight advantage for Watson and Associates, primarily with respect to the number of studies that have been conducted, 350 versus 60, and the strength of the references that were received. So this report is offered for Council's consideration. All right. So... We had a quotation go out. Uh, we did budget for it. We have a report back to us. Now's your chance to say what you think here, if you want to go ahead with it or go ahead, Dave. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, we've been discussing this for since the, our beginning of our term of council. We know there has to be uh, some changes made in the development charges. So I'd like to make a motion to move forward with the recommendation to go with what was recommended with, okay. the, with that company. Yeah, Watson, Watson and Associates. Watson yeah. and Associates. Yeah. Deputy Mayor Giroux moved that. I have a seconder, seconded by Councillor Pomeroy. Any more comments? All in favor? And that's carried. Thank you. Uh, great. So that's the end of. Uh, of staff reports, uh, correspondence. Uh, um, we have some action items here with regards to unpaid uh, taxes. Um, they all have different circumstances. Gwendolyn, what's your? Uh, um, so number one, I had reached out to her um, by a phone and I wasn't able to reach her by phone, so I sent her an email and never got a response. Um, when I did look at the account when she purchased the property, 
there was no tax certificate ordered by her lawyer. So her lawyer would have had to advise her from the tax certificate what the due dates were, um, because that would have been on the tax certificate. And that's a normal form of process that any lawyer should be doing to make sure that the taxes are paid and when the next due dates are. Um, so in my recommendation, I would not um, recommend that any penalty be waived there. In the second case of number two, um, that has already been resolved. So you don't need anything with regards to the second no. one? No, because I did write it off under the circumstances. Okay. So we're dealing with uh, the first aid action item there. Um, what's council's thoughts? Barry, go ahead. Are you Mr. Mayor Wendland. Um, so if we did write this off, what would be, is it $8 and 34 cents? Is that the amount? 42.36. I th yeah, I thought it was 40 some dollars. Yeah, 42.36. <clears throat> hmm. The first one, Barry. Yeah, the second one was $8 oh, well. and All right. four cents, I think. I must have put that up there. Okay, so what's council's thoughts there? Uh, um, it's been explained. Recommendation from the treasurer is not to waive the penalty. Second one was waived due to circumstances. Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Giroux. You're muted. Oh, you're on mute. There you go. Okay. Uh, Rendell, uh, Wendelin has uh, explained to council, I think, the best in her terminology, that it really wasn't uh, any fault of the treasurer or any fault of the municipality where the taxes weren't, weren't paid. It's a very minimal amount. Uh, but if we're not in errors, I don't see how we can waive. If we are in errors, I have no problem paying them. I don't think we are. By the sound of it, it's a lawyer's mistake. Uh, yeah. right? so. yeah. And if an error was made on the township side, it would be automatically reversed. Okay. So do I have a uh, waiver one way or the other? Well, I will move that uh, we send her a letter to say it. That we didn't err, so I don't see how we we can ask the taxpayer to pick it up. Great, thank you. Moved by Deputy Mayor Giroux, seconded by Councillor Ellis. All in favor, I can't see Hart, so I don't know if he's still there or, uh, but it, all in favor of the vote. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. I, I don't know if Hart's still there or if he fell off the, off the meeting, but uh, anyways, that was carried, Wendelin. Okay. Um, so I was going to suggest if people want a five minute break here, uh, it's up to you. Um, we can before we go into uh, um, committee reports. Uh, what's your thoughts? If you want five minutes, we can do it now. Or if you want to carry on and move through it, that's fine too. Anybody? Dave, go ahead. You're, you're our... We're yeah. almost through, are we not? We're getting there. It's uh, yeah. There's just new business, and sometimes they can be lengthy. But. Yeah, sometimes it can. Five minute break. Okay. Moved by Deputy Mayor Giroux that we take a five minute break. Uh, we return at ten to twelve. Um, the seconder. Okay, Larry, Councilor Ellis. All in favor? Thank you. Okay, take five minutes, and we'll be right back. Back to order. Get resolution to uh, return to the session. Um, Councillor Pomeroy and seconder there. Councillor Webb, all in favor. Carried. Okay. Um, so we'll move into uh, committee liaison report. Um, our council activities and uh, we have some things there as far as uh, 
Deputy Mayor Giroux with the County Council meeting and myself the same. I also had a joint service meeting, which is now a Peterborough liaison committee. Uh, um, so they've changed the name of, from joint services um, and our conference calls. And um, most of the conference calls have, has already been on the news, but uh, our the one with Miriam on Thursday night, that was our 25th meeting by Zoom or, um, or telephone. Uh, she did talk about this new Canada infrastructure bank that's uh, coming out and there's some good things in there for us, which is uh, agriculture infrastructure, there's 1.5 million in there for that and uh, 2 million for broadband, which are 2 billion, I'm sorry, these are billions, not millions. Um, yeah, so th these, these funds are broadband for this area. I don't know how many emails I've had and I'm sure everybody else is the same. Um, and we've seen it with things, even with Hearts going through trying to carry a simple meeting, uh, freezing up. So hopefully we can get things better in Eastern Ontario with some of that money. Um, and um, some of the discussion, the, the key word from a lot of them around the table was as we keep moving forward, it's like in a surgical approach. So we have to make sure we do it right. We can't go back to where we were before. So um, hopefully um, we can get things going down the right path. But uh, as far as provincial, um, you know, Dave was mentioning some things around uh, capacity at the hospitals um, and the number that it takes. And it's, it, it all goes back, it's complicated numbers, but uh, it seems like there's lots of capacity right now, but it doesn't take much if COVID kicks in because right now all the elective surgeries are back in place, but COVID, I guess, takes a huge amount of time of a bed in ICU, um, 24 hours minimum, where these operations just take it two hours or so and they're in and out of the bed, so it gets lots of use. But uh, anyway, it's a complicated thing. Hopefully the numbers can, we can get a handle on things and not go back to where we were and uh, move on. So uh, with that, is there anything anybody else would like to add to the uh, activity report? And if not, I'll get a motion that we receive that report. Moved by Councillor Webb, seconded by Councillor Pomeroy. All in favor? And that's carried. Um, next, uh, written or oral notice of motions. Uh, I have no written, so is there any oral notice of motions to come forward at this meeting? If not, we can move into new business. And uh, so we'll now into new business. Um, so Deputy Mayor Jarrell, you have uh, a few things on there. You're muted right now. Sometimes the space bar doesn't work like it's supposed to and you have to manually get out of there. If you like, I can skip, I can carry on until you get that figured out. There you go. I don't know what happened. Um, okay, uh, I'm not sure whether I'm even calling this right or not, but as I call it the black hat, black cat, whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. So my understanding is that it, it came and I, I want to know if we've been trained on it yet and if it's out in the field. Yeah, I, Bob can answer if he likes. I can tell you, yes, it, I've seen three reports on Friday from it. And uh, um, yeah, it's been around. You probably passed it a few times uh, out here on oh, was it speeding? Uh, and uh, yeah, the numbers are kind of like we had on North School Road when we did it that time. As much as you think a lot of speeders are out there, it's uh, um, not quite as bad as you, you think. But uh, it is monitoring and it did pick up, I forget which area, one area was a little higher than the other. It's been on George Street, it's been on 44, it's been on 46, and I don't know where it is now. I was actually gonna ask today where it is because uh, Larry has a problem over on the eighth line and uh, it probably would be a good spot. Maybe it's there already, I don't know. <clears throat> Through you, Mr. Mayor, maybe it'd be a good idea not to say where it is. Okay, well, exactly. Uh, a lot of people think it's photo radar. If you can, if you really know what you're looking for, you can see it. But uh, um, the police are the ones that put it up. They go around, and um, so it was on for a week on 46 here. 
um, and picked up some good data. But go ahead, Bob. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin, uh, just further to your comments um, and to answer the questions from the deputy mayor. Uh, yes, the unit was received. Uh, we, the deputy clerk and I did a little bit of training. We did a training session on it. Um, however, the unit is deployed by the OPP. Um, it has been deployed um, several times throughout our township. Uh, they have, we have given them some direction on that. Uh, other times they deploy it where they feel a need. Uh, those reports will be forthcoming. They will first be presented to Police Services Board, which has a meeting later in October, um, following which those reports will be brought forward to a council meeting. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. You want to go through your list there, Dave? Yeah, Are, well, Dave, 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 with regard, I wonder with regards to back, Black Hat there, is that your that question, Larry? If I could, just a quick comment, uh, Deputy Mayor Joe. Um, without without spelling out the locations, we all know that there are some main arteries, our main um, busy, busy township roads. Um, if it has not been deployed there, I'm asking to have it deployed in those areas, please. Thank you. Yeah. Through, through you, Mayor Martin. If uh, if I could ask uh, Councillor Ellis, if you send me an email with specific locations, I'm happy to pass those along to the OPP. Thank you, Bob. Will do. Well, uh, number two, I guess uh, we've already discussed that one. Um, I thought it would be pertinent today to discuss the Santa Claus parade. So, if you want to continue on with that? I see M Mayor Martin, you had something on there. If we can, we can continue on. With the next one, yeah, okay. I'll leave it for the I'll report on the Santa Claus parade. All right, and uh, direction to the community regarding the Halloween door to door. Now, I, I'm assuming I shouldn't assume anything, but I would think perhaps we might be waiting for, for the health department to give some guidance on that. I don't think we could stop anybody from going to uh door to door if they so choose, but uh, I prefer that. Uh, just a discussion on what council thinks, I guess, on the, on the situation. Yeah, and I think with regards to that, Dave, it's something that uh, it would be up to the health unit as far as us. It's, uh, I'll, I've heard a lot of different scenarios. A lot of parents probably won't be sending their kids out. Um, some are doing uh, backyard scavenger hunts, uh, um, different things like that. Um, I've heard from some seniors that won't be turning their lights on because they don't want to take a chance. Um, so it's going to be up to the it's up to the parents and on how they want to deal with it or the health unit I think because it's uh, it's just going to be a different year like everything else is but I don't think we want to wade into it as a council because it's uh, you know we can just recommend to people what we think but uh, you know it's like everything else. With all Thank you. Bob, go ahead. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin, uh, just to address that uh, Halloween issue uh, a little further. Uh, we are getting phone calls at the municipal office from the community. So just to uh, inform council and of course via Zoom inform the community. Um, obviously the township does not regulate uh, Halloween nor trick-or-treating. Uh, it is our expectation that we will be getting guidance from uh, Peterborough Public Health and they will bring forward uh, a recommendation for the community. Okay, is that okay, Dave? Fine, okay. thank you. All right, and uh, so I'll move into mine. All I was looking for is I think the next uh, wave of uh, funding for the COVID expenses comes out at the end of October. I was just wondering if we could get a detailed report. I, I, I shared one with Bob as far as uh, um, another municipality. It might be something that we could get into the where we're at as far as everything, all the costs associated with the shutdown. Um, so it'll, you have some time there, Wendelin, but it's just, uh, if we could get something there, um, a real detailed report. I have preliminary numbers already worked out for revenue losses in the different departments from the year to date reports and um, the expenses as well. Um, I believe it's Thursday this week. I have a Zoom meeting with MMAH on the template 
for the um, next funding um, issues. So most of the treasurers are waiting for that direction from the province to how to proceed and what data they require for the reporting. Okay. Well, I think like of the 265,000 that we received, there's a, um, we should have an update on it. Yeah, so right now I'm sitting at around 118 plus thousand that uh, between revenue losses and expenditures. So that's changing week to week. So I'm going to try to keep up on that each week. Okay, and that might be your next management meeting there. Yep. Bob, to make sure all the all the departments are getting all their numbers in because about everything that it's cost us because it's surprising. We don't want to miss anything here either, but uh, it's been a huge cost to the municipality, but uh, that funding really helped and it probably wouldn't hurt to send a letter to the province thanking them um, for helping us out there, but uh, that's yeah. up to the council. Yeah, and we had the library board meeting last week and I mentioned to the library board um, because we haven't really had a whole lot of contact during the COVID that if they've had expenditures, expenditures which they have had for um, partitions, et cetera, so that we're making sure that we're capturing everything in that report and not leaving them out as well. Exactly. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Um, that's all I was asking for there. And then as far as this, I kind of jumped the gun when I put this reverse Santa Claus parade. It was an idea I had last week. I seen it in another municipality. Um, we have nothing to do with the Santa Claus parade. That's the Lions. And the Lions don't have any money to be able to do it this year anyways. They, they haven't had any bingos since March, so I'm sure they're feeling the pinch, but they just said, um, from what I got from the Lions is uh, they've canceled the Santa Claus parade for this year. Um, as far as I know, they're trying to come up with a different alternative, maybe something, and that's what I said, is it'd be nice to see something festive. Uh, so this reverse parade was um, in Western Ontario. They were doing a where the floats park on the side of the road and the people drive by them. So it was an idea that I thought would work here. And I think Belleville's talking about it, but I don't know if it fits with the medical officer of health or the health unit uh, as far as uh, the grouping on the floats. I think that's a concern in Belleville. Um, you know, you can keep in your, the bubbles are gone now, but uh, that kind of thing, if it's families on a float and they want to decorate, it could have worked, but. Right now, the Lions are the ones that are in charge and, and they're not holding it. So, um, Dave, go ahead. Well, thank you for that. And uh, I realize the under the conditions we're in, that we'll have to make some concessions and thank the Lions Club for all they've done in the past and what they're gonna do in the future. So when we get the rail down through, I think we can put in a request for the Christmas train to come through and that would help us out. Let's put that in now, Dave. So we'll request that the uh, yeah the, the Christmas train go through. <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, we'll uh, we'll keep our ears open if there is another opportunity. Like you know, it, we'd have to get onto it soon. But uh, um, there were suggestions. Uh, that I think they have talked about some other things, and if there's anything we can do to help them publicize it, that would be good. But it's something that the Lions can maybe spearhead and. Uh, Hopefully we can work with them on it. So, um, and that being said, and all they had was an, the other thing was, and I've said it before, is uh, we are getting, you know, when you're getting calls with uh, um, speeding and things happening on the road, we can't stress enough to the public that they have to call that 188 310 11 22 because if it's not on the police report, it's by the time it gets from a council to to the police or wait for the um, police service board meeting, it's too late. So they can't stress enough that that's what that number is for. It's not 911, it's the non-emergency number. They should call it because we have speeding, we have dirt bikes, we have four wheel, we have everything going on around, but if, it, if it's just gonna go through council, the, the lag time is just, uh, it, it just makes it not effective. So um, they need to get it on the books with the OPP and they'll move this, uh, you know, they'll move to take care of it. I know they, you know, they've been busy out here on 46 uh, um, in the last little while. So um, we'll see the numbers when it comes to the police uh, police meeting as far as uh, where they've been. But uh, I know they've been busy. So 
anyways, um, Bob, did you have something there to add to that or? Uh, no, not to add to that uh, through you, Mayor Martin, but I do have an item under uh, other business okay. when, when you're ready. Okay, I'm done with uh, my items. Uh, so I'll, uh, is there, Larry, you had something? If I could uh, add another item under other business as well, huh, when you're yeah, ready. I'm, go ahead. Why don't you do it now then, Larry, and then we'll move on. Okay. Um, it was basically just an update for council regarding a couple of items and we do have Peter Lawson here. So I'm gonna ask him to give us um, a couple of updates. One on the drainage issue on the sixth line. Um, Peter and his staff were out there um, uh, last week and have run into some difficulties. Uh, there was an agreement at last council of how to deal with the, the drainage issue, but I'll leave, uh, I'll leave it up to Pete to give us an update, please. Thank you. Yes, <clears throat> through you, Mayor Martin. Uh, yeah, staff was out uh, doing some preparation work on the sixth line, uh, doing some uh, some grades and, <clears throat> and getting ready to install the cross culvert that uh, uh, through Engage and staff uh, had agreed upon, which would be the best option. Uh, this certain placement that uh, I think the residents uh, met on the sixth line, uh, that particular spot for the culvert uh, is not going to be uh, very feasible. Uh, so uh, with their grades and the laser in hand, which doesn't lie, <laughs> uh, we're, we want to push the culvert uh, more north um, to uh, Pacific Address 1680, and uh, that would uh, still direct the flow into the actual uh, spot that we originally anticipated uh, absorbing the excess water. Um, there, there is a slight elevation in the drainage ditch um, on the west side to get the water to the cross culvert. So um, uh, since our staff was out last week, I have uh, made some calls with some contractors uh, to get their uh, meat on site and get their uh, um, evaluation of uh, if it would be an extra cost or I think we can get it in. Uh, we just want to break a little rock in the ditch uh, with the whole ram just to create a little bit uh, more of a even level, not even so it just doesn't climb uh, the grades to get to the cross culvert. So that's kind of where we're, we're at there. We're just uh, I was out there this afternoon, but uh, I might not. But yes, yeah, it's uh, it will be out there tomorrow, probably for sure with uh, the contractor. Okay, One quick question, Peter, did you do test holes when you had the laser? No, uh, we didn't. We actually could get it just to the flat rock with our feet and shovels. So we didn't actually need the back hole. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so the, that's what's based all of the, uh, the grades on was the, was the flat rock. And that's, uh, that's where the problem lies. Uh, it's uh, in a, such a long area. And uh, was, when Gage was there and myself too, it, uh, and was she... Uh, Hindsight, we should have had the grade, uh, the laser there with uh, with the engineer, and uh, uh, had a better look or closer look at it at that time. But uh, it uh, it was a little deceiving on that end. So, but okay. uh, very good. Thank you, Peter. Yep. And um, go ahead, uh, Deputy Mayor Joe. Uh, thank you, thank you, Peter, for your involvement in this and your input. Uh, this has been an ongoing thing, as you know. So, we want to, if we're going to do it, we better try and do it right and get it done. Um, the only request that I would have is uh, if you keep uh, keep the landowners both on both sides uh, in communication, and, and uh, communications is a big thing. So, let them know what's going on, and protect, particularly <laughs> the one that we're flooding. Definitely, yes, yep. Thank you, Peter. And the last uh, item, Pete, if you could give us an update on uh, the Preston Road Burnt Dam uh, six line intersection, what has to be completed there? Yeah, so the surface treatment is all completed, the ditching, culverts, everything like that. It's just the, uh, the option two on the signage that we have to be, uh, has to be installed. That's, that's all that's left. Okay, I thought there was um, a decision by council last discussion about signage what we were going to do there uh through you mayor martin uh i believe that uh the option number two that was passed by council 
uh, with the chevrons, uh, removal of the, uh, the yield ahead and the yield and installing a yield coming out of burnt dam. That was my understanding for the signage. Okay, I just was curious where we sat with it. The only thing with that recommendation is that's what it was, that's fine. The only thing that the, the local people there didn't want the yield signs taken away. Um, they feel that it does slow people down still, um, but that's up to you. If that's what the motion was, go with it. But uh, I know that's not what they wanted there. So um, they did like the yield. They liked it just like it is almost and just leave the yield sign because it, they think that the yield sign slows it down. But if that's what was decided, that's good. So do you have anything else, Larry? Right. No, that was it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank okay. you, Peter. Thank you. Okay. Um, Barry and then Mark. Yeah, I just have one old business, new business, I guess, is our um, EA at the treatment plant. Um, I would like to see us get a get that ready for shovel in the ground because a year, as you know, a year ago last February, uh, we were told if you want to get any of these grants to make sure that the, it's shovel ready. And uh, I I know we made a proposal to Aqua, but I think we're going to have to rattle their chain and, and, and get the process started. So I would like maybe Bob to get in touch with uh, Aqua and um, ask him if they will proceed right away, not, you know, the, the sooner the better, because <clears throat> in my uh, literature that I've been receiving, the E of A should be easier to get now than what they were before. So it would be nice for to, for to have it ready because we do have some other projects that are on the list. Okay, thank you, Bob. Yes, well, through you, Mayor Martin, um, that provides a good introduction to the item I was hoping to uh, bring forward. Um, and I'm bringing this, this item forward because it is a time sensitive matter. Uh, received an email over the weekend from the Ontario Clean Water Agency. Um, and as council members will remember, we were hoping to have an in-person meeting uh, with Aqua uh, as well as sewer technologies. So they are proposing some dates. Uh, which I did email. I don't know if all of you had a chance to see that, but over the weekend that was emailed. So the first priority option is Friday, October 23rd. Um, second option is Friday, October 16th. And there's two other dates there, which are on Tuesdays, um, but they do prefer Fridays. So they're asking if we can meet on Friday, October 23rd, if council's available. Is that evening or is that in the daytime? No, that would be during the day. So what's the count? Through you, Mr. Mayor, I'm available on the 23rd. Okay. Yeah, I can be available. There, uh, Barry, go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, that still doesn't address my... Uh... No, that'll no. Request, you know, like um, I, I know that Bob has a bunch of dates here that we can. Yeah. But I would like him to get a hold of Aqua and try to start this EA mm -hmm. as soon as possible because that that's another project that we're talking about now. And we we gotta get her going because we're gonna be in a bind if we don't. Okay, so we have two yeah. things on the there, Bob. So, yeah. uh, so let's finish up with Councillor Pomeroy's uh, suggestion there, and um, we need to. We he's right. We got to get a hold of Aqua and get this thing moving. So, right through you, Mayor Martin. Uh, I expect that we can do both at the same time. I will communicate with Aqua the need to move on with the environmental assessment and get that moving right away. Uh, and at the same time, I can address a meeting date. That should work, Barry. Yep. Uh, okay. Uh, Dave, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Martin. Bob. Yeah, okay, go ahead. <clears throat> go ahead, Barry. Uh, I'll direct my question to Bob. October the 23rd, Friday. Did you have a time on that? 
we don't we don't have a specific time but i would i would propose the typical time that we meet uh, at 9 30 unless you prefer a time if council has a preferred time i can certainly offer that up i don't have a preferred time but i just wanted to make sure uh, one way or another that's all that's good with me and, and if that's good with the rest of council i had to go and get my phone and look at it because i my calendar's on so i'm good for the 23rd <clears throat> Okay, and then Hart, sorry I missed you there. And uh, yeah, I prefer afternoon, Bob, but that's just me. Whatever council goes with, I'll go with it. But I prefer evening, actually, but that's just another story. On a Friday? <laughs> it's another day, Barry. Yeah. Um, go ahead, Hart. Um, yeah, well, it's just a point when Pete was talking there. I was just, uh, I was, I'm still kind of confused in terms of where the signage is going to be at that intersection. So I was wondering if maybe I'd stop by to see Pete if he could diagram that in terms of where the chevrons and the yield signs and everything were going to be. Because I know we got a report, but it was it's hard for me to envision exactly where everything is. And I get a few questions, I think. So Yes, through, through you, Mayor Martin. Yeah, no problem, uh, Councillor Webb. We can, I can meet you anytime. And even out on site, we can go out and have a drive even. And, uh, and uh, I can bring the map. Uh, that was passed uh, and uh, go through it for sure and uh, we'll do that before we uh, before we get to proceeding with the, the new signage. Thanks Pete. Yep. We'll wait for a sunny Are you okay yeah. with the 23rd then Hart? Are you okay yep. with the 23rd? Yep. So Bob if you could set something up for the 23rd uh, that would be good. And, and okay. Know. Is there anything else under new business? Go ahead Barry. No, oh, this is still the same same thing. Could we not have the meeting at uh, say nine nine thirty in the morning and get it done instead of the way? Uh, yes, through you, Mayor Martin. I was proposing nine thirty. That was one of the yeah. Okay, I'm going to talk to you later about the budget meeting. But uh, anyways, okay, that's good. So okay. we have that. Is that all taken care of? Yep. All right. Um, okay then, so uh, that's new business if there's nothing else. So, look, bylaws, we don't have any bylaws. So, I'll look for a confirming bylaw here to leave this meeting. Uh, Councillor Webb, moved by Councillor Webb, seconded by Councillor Ellis. Was that you okay to all in favor? And that's carried. And then motion to adjourn this meeting, uh, Councillor Pomeroy, Councillor Ellis. Did you have something to add, Larry? You're you're muted. Just a quick question: the the meeting with Aqua is that a virtual? No, uh, no. Through you, Mayor Martin. This this uh, as directed by Council. This will be an in person meeting at the uh, at the Havelock Community Center. Thank you. Okay, and that. That's good. Okay, well, thank you. Um, what time do you want to go for uh, the closed session, Bob? Uh, yes, through you, Mayor Martin. We have a guest coming at one o'clock. One o'clock? Yeah. Holy. <laughs> All right. What happens if we're not there, Bob? <laughs> uh oh, we have a disappointed guest. <laughs> one o'clock funny. All right, well, thank you. And we'll, uh, we'll see you in a little while. It's at the office, right? That is correct.